Welcome to the December 13th, 2023 Select Board, Board of Health, Sewer Commissioner meeting here in the 8 Conway Street Municipal Offices in South Deerfield. Um, it is 4.04. I'm calling the meeting to order. The meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. So we're called to order. And um, I would like everyone to officially welcome Christopher Dunn, our new planner, um, economic development person here in town. Welcome. welcome. Welcome, Chris. Thank you all. So what was happening in your first week? Sure. Uh, well, uh, right off the bat, Trevor took me on a little tour of our wastewater treatment plant uh, yeah. in South Deerfield. So that was great. Um I also just got a ride around with Kevin this morning to see uh, some of the damage on River Road and some of the other areas where we need culvert replacements. Uh, met with Tim and Denise earlier this week to talk about some of the big planning projects that are going on. Um, and you know, beyond that, I've been taking kind of a deep dive into all the different plans that the town has assembled over the last few years and our zoning bylaws, which just got you know rehauled. So are overhauled, I should say. Um, so it's been, yeah, it's been busy, but good. And everyone's been super helpful just getting settled in. So yeah, can't Great. complain. Great. It's yeah. wonderful. We're so happy to have you, seriously. Um, and we will get some curtains for you at some point <laughs> soon so you don't get blasted by the you know, afternoon I, sun. I ended up finding something in, in my attic that kind of works to cover up that spot in the afternoon. So for the moment, I'm okay. Yeah, nice. So sure. it does get a little warm in there, but it's, it's, yeah. I like having the sunshine though. Yeah. So that side's warm, the side's cold. That's right. Fortunately, you're going into the winter and not into the summer months. <laughs> we'll try to sort it out some more as we move forward. Yeah, no rush. Okay. Thanks all. Um, awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks again. Yeah. Have a lovely evening. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your executive session. Yeah, right. now. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Christopher. Yeah. Oh, yes. We've, we've decided yes. we're going to call him Christopher because there's so many Chris yeah. Curtis, Chris Nolan, you know, already. Yep. So Christopher it is. Chris to taking over. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> it was a popular name, obviously. It was. Yep. Okay. Um, we're going to go into executive session. It goes um, on the front. The, it's the second or third item on your agenda. Yes. Um, but is Kate ready? I don't see her. Let me go text her. Well, why don't you read the jumble? Yeah, it okay. in. It in. Uh, executive session pursuant to general laws, chapter 30A, section 21A2. The select board may enter into executive session to and subject to the chairman's declaration and a roll call vote. Select board may meet to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, for contract negotiations with the town administrator, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the town. And I so declare. Yeah, second. All, the All those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. And we'll be inviting in um, Kate. Kate uh, Federoff, so, our lawyer, and Kate Casey Moore. and um, Morin, our town administrator, and Chris Nolan, our assistant town administrator. Okay. All right. That's good. And we'll be back to open session about five o'clock, right? Yes. Maybe sooner, but. Yeah, about five o'clock. That's when the hearing is. Welcome back in session for our select board meeting of December 13th, 2023. We have um, a wonderful uh, overview this today, this afternoon, um, on the Leary lot, the progress and what we're proposing for the Leary lot with all our new green design. So 
We have Chris Curtis here, um, who has been working with us as a Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant. And we have Jeff Squires from Berkshire Design, who has been working with us for this wonderful design. So, um, Jeff, <laughs> why don't you um, start with a little bit of overview of what's happening? Sure, and I can jump in, and I'll probably turn it over to Chris at some point here. But um, yeah, we've we've you know advanced the design quite a ways. We've um, you know taken all the input, received it at a lot of the various other public um, you know public meetings and outreach session sessions. Um, we have um, presented the plan to the planning board, um, and so we are, you know, on the tail end of, you know, wrapping up a final set of construction drawings um, that would uh, be put out to bid. So um, I think we are, you know, waiting for this last form um, to discuss any other, you know, updates, changes, um, questions, um, and then, yeah, our charge will be to, you know, march forward with a with a set of construction drawings that can be that can be bid out. Um, Chris, I don't know whether you have anything to add. Um, Chris Curtis, I, I've, you know, I understood tonight's presentation was primarily focused on the green infrastructure components of the of the project specifically um, that are suitable for the um, or eligible for the for the um, for the grant. And so, um, you know, several of the slides are are sort of repeats. I didn't um, I didn't put too much together that dealt with a lot of the finer details that we've looked at some of the past forms. It was mostly focused on um, the rain garden, uh, the tree box filters and the bioswale and just how they, how, you know, where they're located and their, their components and how they play into the overall, you know, stormwater design of the project. So um, that's, that's the sort of introduction to, to my slides. And uh, Chris, I don't know whether you have anything to add, but can, um, share my screen and um, yeah, if, and unless you have anything to, to add. Just real, real quickly, thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah. I, Chris, could you talk a little closer to the mic? Sure. Thank you. Um, just as by way of background, a uh, portion of the Leary Lot Project is funded under our Municipal Vulner Vulnerability Preparedness Grant from the state, um, and that's paying for the green infra infrastructure components that Jeff was just referring to. Um, the idea behind these grants is that we want to try to anticipate the um, impacts from climate change that the town will be experiencing going forward. And in Deerfield, those impacts are heavily focused on um, much larger, more extreme rainfall events and flooding. And so in you know developing a new parking lot in the center of town, we obviously want to take a look at those issues and make sure that we're not creating um, additional flooding problems for the town center. And in fact, are hopefully mitigating some of the potential flooding impacts that might otherwise occur. So the idea behind this project is to put together um, not only a parking lot, but really an amenity for the town that's going to be an attractive green space. It's going to be a you know, beautiful place for people to um, go outside and in, in, in the good weather and have, you know, outdoor dining opportunities, um, kind of a little miniature park like facility. Um, and it'll also be a, an amenity in terms of uh, flooding and, and rainfall, uh, stormwater um, reduction in, in town. So that's the idea behind it. Um, and why we're, you know, putting the um, effort into the green components, uh, the green infrastructure components of the project. One of the things that I want to say that I'm most excited about is once we took the borings and, and Jeff came back with the information on the, on the soils there, we felt very strongly that porous pavement would be a wonderful um, selection for there because when you have rainfall, that parking lot, the infrastructure of the horse pavement would provide excess um, storage capacity. And, and that to me was so exciting, after, especially after this summer, when we had that intense rain events in the north end of town, all I could think about was, oh my gosh, if it was just two miles south, 
you know, all of South Deerfield Village would have been devastated. And so this, I'm, I'm on like a crusade to try to come up with storage capacity and come up with ways that we can figure out how we can mitigate the water if, if an event like um, happened this past summer down here. Um, we 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 just wouldn't recover because it would be so much personal loss versus just public loss like roads and stuff like that it would be persons houses and and businesses so having storage capacity is really important and we are not a community like Cambridge who is literally burying 20 two million gallon storage tanks to take, uh, storm water and and water from flooding um, to protect their community. But we can do the same thing if we are intentional in everything that we put in downtown in like our campus, like the library parking lot, it becomes porous pavement, it will become storage area for excess water. So that to me is the most exciting thing about this whole project. And I'm I'm thrilled that it's going to be more green, more attractive. People will be able to be more social, and there'll be more walkability downtown, and it'll be safer. But I am also just really, really happy about the storage capacity of water. Do you have anything to add, Tim or Trevor? No, I think it's great. Is that no. um, I was just wanting to confirm something, Jeff, if you are able to. Um, there are currently some there there's some ev chargers in place and then there's some parking is that parking part of the leary lot this existing lot yes. on this side yes yeah. all all of the entirety of this parcel has been considered that's uh, that's what i thought the dimensions and the lines were showing i just wanted to confirm that for people who might not know that yes. and so um that will expand considerably with the addition of like 50 is it 55 or 56 parking spots that we settled on um i'd have to confirm the count now we had to juggle a couple of spaces around for accessible ev charging spaces uh, right, um, yeah. so we may have lost a space um but I, I yeah it's it's somewhere in that ballpark 50 plus yep yep um yeah so i as um hey, Chris. Yeah, and and so yes, the the porous pavement is is you know definitely an exciting um, component of this overall project, and uh, you know a, a huge part of that that infrastructure. And you know, interestingly enough, it's you know it's sort of separated out from the um, the the from the grant money that Chris was alluding to. So you know, in addition to the porous asphalt, we've also got you know other stormwater mitigation features and um, structures that will enable. You know, this and, and you know, I think, Gail, your point about this being, you know, right in literally the backyards of not only the commercial downtown um, of South Deerfield, but, you know, proximate to homes and other businesses that, you know, anything that can be done to, um, you know, mitigate what otherwise would be, you know, a, a large lot of impervious surface um, is is a great, great attribute for for any project. So, um but the yeah the green infrastructure specifically that is was eligible for the grant um, you know doesn't include the poor so that was in many ways a, a bonus for for the project. Um, so yeah, I guess just real quickly, um, you know, obviously the existing site, um, the um, the existing lot and EV chargers on the um, on the on the right side of the page here, and then the additional land um, that was picked up by the town through a land swap with Hemshaw. Um, to provide uh, another access out onto Elm Street. Um, this is the currently is currently the working design um, that we are working to refine into construction documents. Um, like I said, there's a few updates with regards to the accessible spaces and these new EV chargers, which are proposed on the north side of the site. Um, the ones on the um, that currently exist will will remain um, in that location. But this, um, you know, certainly expands uh, parking opportunities for the town. Um, we've included uh, there's two tree box filters at the entrance off of North Main, um, coming into the site. Um, 
There's in the back of the site, there's um, a larger rain garden that also provides some private, you know, outdoor amenity space for the residents that currently live, you know, in this building um, that otherwise don't have any, you know, any private outdoor, you know, space. They're surrounded by parking lot um, and, and gravel areas. And so this this rain garden feature provides, um, you know, some sense of, of green space for them. Um, as well as, uh, you know, mitigating, um, you know, stormwater during, during heavy storms. And then the, the bioswale feature that we have included um, is sort of an extension of this uh, rain garden that, that snakes its way up between the, the new sidewalk that's associated with a parking lot and the existing parking spaces and parking, you know, larger sort of parking area associated with the the businesses that front elm street um, a lot of this drainage you know heads in this direction so a bioswale in this location was an opportunity to to pick up some of the flows and and run off from um from from the rear of these buildings during large storms and direct them to you know a place that's that's designed to manage um you know those larger storm events so um i think there's a lot of features uh, baked into this this design and and the engineering that um, certainly helped to mitigate you know any of the potential impacts that otherwise might have been felt by um, you know a large paved um, you know traditionally paved surface um, um, sidewalks providing access to the future uh, you know th to the uh, Berkshire Brewing Company um, you know around the site another pedestrian connection to Elm Street and and that sidewalk. Um, so you can really walk entirely through the site, um, you know, on a pedestrian surface that, you know, really is a much safer um, and sort of uh, more garden like experience, as some has alluded to, um, compared to walking along um, that street front. So, um, again, just some of the plans from the from the, um, you know, common drawing set. This is the grading plan um, showing, you know, where stormwater is directed. Um, Picking it up in this bioswale, these red um, red um, symbols indicate areas where we had dug test pits to confirm um, soil uh, soil types and, and depth of groundwater. Um, so that you know all informed um, you know the overall grading scheme for the for the site. And so just looking specifically at some of the um, some of these individual you know green infrastructure components aside from the Porous includes these two tree box filters um, at the entryway off of North Main. Um, you know, they they really take many different forms and shapes and sizes. Um, you know, what we are looking at is um, you know something um, something that the town has used previously, at least in terms of the manufacturer. So, you know, our hope is to provide you know some you know not necessarily a standard, but um, you know a a product. Um, and a tree box filter that at least is, you know, recognizable and, and um, maintenance is, is a little bit more standard from the DPW stand up view, uh, point of view. Um, it's not a, you know, these are all from the same manufacturer. They have similar components. So, um, you know, once familiarized with those, um, you know, with those maintenance routines, they should apply to, you know, any of their products. So that those are located um, at the, at the entry from North Main, again, designed to infiltrate infiltrate water, get it into the tree uh, tree root system, um, provide you know um, uptake from you know not only some heavy metals and and other um, uh, contaminants that might be in the soils, but also uh, just encourages the infiltration of groundwater, infiltration of uh, to groundwater. Um, and any excess, you know, there's there's some nuances with these designs that will be a little bit unique to this. Um, to this particular project, uh, primarily because of the um, of the porous asphalt, that tree box filters traditionally have an overflow that takes water to a uh, a sub drain that then ties to you know a standard uh, or typical um, storm drain system, municipal storm drain system, and we've got the ability because of the additional capacity on this site with the porous. To direct any overflow into the into the reservoir course below the below the asphalt, we've got probably you know quadruple the um, storage capacity in this lot based on you know standard engineering you know rainfall amount. So 
Um, that's one of the advantage of, of porous is that it, they're really, you know, over-engineered in many regards, but especially with regards to storage capacity, um, there's an excess in this lot. So, you know, rather than directing that overflow to, to the municipal system, we'll simply direct that to the, to the uh, porous pavement base. So that's, a, you know, an exciting feature of this, of this project. Um, again, as I noted, the bioswale um, separating the, the properties than the business, uh, commercial businesses along Elm Street and the, and the Leary lot. Um, as I noted, it's, it's really designed to be an extension of this rain garden. So trying to pick up some of the, you know, heavy surface flows that come from this parking area behind those businesses and, and direct those to a place that's intended to manage stormwater. Um, similarly, these take many, you know, forms and shapes um, and details. Similarly, with a with a sub drain, you know, because we are surrounded with just this giant, you know, stone reservoir below the parking lot, we can really take, you know, the additional the overflows and rather than piping it to a municipal system, simply direct it to um, the the reservoir course below the um, below the the paved surface. Um, so these, you know, this will be largely vegetated. Um, we'll take surface flows from, from the from the parking lot, and and you know, as much as we can, direct it, um, direct it to the rain garden, which is a larger, um, larger feature further um, further west in the parking lot. And so that again is the rain garden is is in this location provides um, you know some some nice green space. Um, and a buffer to the residential building that's located, um, you know, just below it. Um, again, many different forms and shapes, but really intended to be, um, you know, a smaller stormwater uh, detention area that is planted with, you know, a host of um, native species, um, perennial, annual, um, you know, some woody species, and that is designed to take periodic flooding and and you know store water in, in smaller manageable amounts um, before being infiltrated. And again, this um, you know this is an example of one that we did um, on Route Nine in Hadley. Um, this one you know really was intended to store a fair amount of water because they were very poor soils. I don't anticipate that there'll be periods where you know except during the heaviest storms. Um, because of both the porous asphalt courses and the sandier soils that this will, you know, detain much water for a long period of time, but it will certainly, you know, stand to collect water from, from neighboring properties and um, during the heaviest flows. So uh, again, uh, mostly focused on, you know, the vegetation and, and taking those periodic inundations of, of storm water. Um, so yeah, these are just a few snapshots um, from some of the you know, working details we have in the construction drawings, um, you know, bioswales and, and stabilization. Um, we've got some rain garden details and, you know, obviously the, the sub drain in many of these is excluded because of, um, because of the, the really porous nature of the, the, um, the porous surfacing. And then just some of the details with tree box filters and how they relate to the curbing and the um, and the paved surface um, adjacent to it and and um, how we manage some of the uh, flows coming off um, off the lot. So um, I don't have a whole lot more to to um, mention at this point, but happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Lily. You had your hand raised. You're muted. I know. I was trying to unmute myself. Thank you. Um, I have two questions. Is the um, that reservoir that we're designing around, is that a built environment or are we simply tapping the existing, you know, natural base? So when I was referring to reservoir, it refers to one of the um, the st a stone course that is below a stone layer that is below the paving of the parking lot. And so what makes one of the features of the porous asphalt is that, you know, not only does the asphalt surface, the bituminous surface allow water to pass through, but then the, the layer of stone that that is built upon is is an open aggregate and so there's there is storage capacity in that compared to traditional asphalt which is you know compressed gravel 
Um, you know, it's got fines. It doesn't it doesn't have a, a very large storage capacity, whereas porous asphalt has a large layer of of just open stone that is intended to hold water. And so this doesn't have the advantage of porous is that we don't need to bury a large tank or a subsurface structure to hold stormwater that you would typically require. This is all built into the all right. this is all so built into it. I guess what, what I'm trying to understand is um, my understanding is that borings were done and the nature of the soil beneath the parking lot indicated that this was a good candidate for um, doing pervious pavement and this capture system. Yes. Uh, so why isn't every place a good candidate, I guess? Because I thought, are we relying on that soil to be able to be a part of the reservoir system? Is that what we need? Very good question. So there are two things at play. Um, one is estimated seasonal high groundwater. Any stormwater system, whether it's buried or porous asphalt um, that allows water to infiltrate into the ground by mass stormwater standards needs to be, the bottom of that needs to be two feet above seasonal high groundwater. And so there's many sites that, you know, have seasonal high groundwater that's pretty high and achieving that two feet of separation is, is pretty challenging. Um, so that's one. The other is that the material above that is very sandy and well draining. Okay. And so, you know, if you had a site that had clay soils over deep groundwater, that really doesn't achieve the intent of, you know, a goal of, of infiltrating. Great. Thank you. And my my second question is on those green spaces. Um, I guess then will it be our DPW that maintains them to make sure that we're, we don't get those damn invasives back again? <laughs> yes. That would be a town question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Thank you. Well, we're, uh, the Conservation District, Franklin Conservation District, has a small grant to do training of our highway department, uh, Owen Wormser and um, somebody else, I can't remember his name, are going to do training for our highway department to remove invasives along Bloody Brook. Um, as you know, we have the wetland delineations now. And then, um, you know, to plant the buffer, the native pollinator buffer, that would have more storage capacity. The root systems would have more storage capacity for water, um, the fluctuations of Bloody Brook. So the idea is to have the band on both sides from Frontier all the way down to Conway Street, and that will provide X number of gallons of storage additional uh, capacity. But that hasn't been figured out yet because we're waiting for the watershed plan that from Franklin uh, Council of Governments, they are finishing that up in the next few months. And that will impact um, the next grant we have, which is again from the Conservation District for field geology to come and do some kind of capacity calculation for this whole downtown area. But Lily, the short answer is the DPW staff will be trained to handle, you know, taking care of native species. So going forward, that's going to have to be added to their area of responsibilities. They won't be mowing. They'll be taking care of managing yeah. a, a resource area. That'll be, that'll be a very specific task. Thank you. Yes. Jeff, I have kind of a related question. Um, you know, we have a couple of rain gardens already in town. And one of the things we're finding is that like any garden, they do require a fair amount of maintenance and actually some watering in the dry weather months in the summer. If we have a drought, you know, the plants are, are you know, they're sort of wetland oriented plants. They need water occasionally. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts about the types of plants that could go in that might be a little bit more hardy than, you know, others and, and, and what kind of maintenance would be anticipated um, for those plants? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. I, you know, I, I'd certainly in, in, um, and I, I don't exactly recall what our plant palette is at the moment. Um, but I know the conversation um, revolved around 
you know, species that, um, you know, as you said, could take periodic, you know, periods of drought, um, as well as, um, you know, handle, handle a fair amount of water. I think one of the advantages of, of this location is, um, and in this site in particular, is that I don't anticipate, as I alluded to, I don't anticipate that there's going to be periods where, you know, that they're submerged in, um, you know, pools of water for, you know, more than, you know, a few minutes, really, because of the of the um, capacity of this overall, you know, project. Um, so I think we can, you know, we, we tried to be a little bit more selective and, you know, err on the side of drought rather than um, flooding. Um, but there are certainly species that, you know, would that tolerate and are common along, you know, edges of, of um, you know, riverbanks and ponds that, you know, again, are, are used to periodic inundations. Um, but in this case, trying to focus a little bit more on those that are a little bit hardier, a little bit more drought tolerant than, um, you know, some of their counterparts, which must be maybe much more, you know, wetland oriented. Um, and, you know, as with any planting, uh, new planting, you know, I think, yeah, the first year will be sort of a critical year in terms of getting everything, um, um, everything, um, you know, stabilized and, and, um, you know, sort of settled into their, to their new locations. Um, and, you know, hopefully we get, we get a, a, a pretty decent year like we did this year and, and got plenty of water. Um, but there's also, you know, the chance that it could be a really dry summer and they may require some, um, you know, some, some watering to get, help them get through the, the drier months. So do we have any access to water in that area, as far as you know? Hmm. I don't know for certain. I would imagine there's, you know, yeah, some water in the adjacent buildings, but I don't know in this lot specifically, I don't, I'm not aware of any water that is here. So I'm going to make maybe just a suggestion that could, maybe we could have further discussion about um, as we go forward, but we do have a few um, businesses represented here tonight. And I think if, if any of the businesses wanted to, um, you know, individually or, or band together to, um, adopt uh, this rain garden and and participate in uh, you know the plantings that go in there. I think that'd be a wonderful contribution to the to the rain garden. You know, the putting putting flowers in or you know um, annuals um, would really you know be a great thing in terms of dressing up that area in the town center. Um, obviously, you know that that'd be entirely voluntary, but. It's it's a thought that you know. I'm curious to see whether there'd be any interest in that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Lily, go ahead. Um, along those lines, um, wouldn't it make sense if nobody wants to adapt a garden? Wouldn't it make sense to put in a water, um, uh, a faucet, <laughs> so that the DPW can uh water the plants should we need it because it's not always going to be like this past year right mm -hmm. and perhaps even if you have a water and i know this is late to the party but it just occurred to me that if we're, we have to maintain these and if we have a water faucet then you can actually have like a bubbler there or something like that which is such a a friendly thing to do uh, anyway that just mm -hmm. yeah from, from our experience at the elementary school um if we didn't have water um for the rain garden it, it would not have survived mm -hmm. so um you know i think that is a really important point that lily makes um however we do it and we might be able to talk to hanshaw lumber about putting an outdoor um mm -hmm. connection on their building which is going to go up very shortly after this i don't uh you know, I don't know what it would take to engineer putting in water pipes into this at this point, but certainly we should find a solution that would provide water. Um, yeah, that makes total sense. Mm. Yeah, I think I think the larger trees, the larger plantings, you know, it, it we could certainly um, 
you know, suggest, um, you know, gator bags, which are, you know, you see them Northampton uses them quite a bit, but they're sort of the green bags around the, and that's something that the DPW or somebody could come around and you fill those up. I, I they hold about, you know, 10 gallons of water and they last for quite a while, but they're certainly not um, suitable for the smaller, you know, smaller herbaceous stuff. So um, a water source may not be a bad idea. We, we did use gator bags on our other tree box filters, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, by the way, in the town center. Sure. And it worked well. They, they don't need them any longer now that they're, you know, they've got the roost system established. Right. It's really that first year once you get them established. And those are those are easy with the trees. Yep. Doesn't DPW have a big water container on the back of the truck? I think, was, I think they do. Yeah. I think they do. Well, um, Annette, did you have any questions or anything? It's lovely to see you. <laughs> no, I was actually being introduced. I was trying to visualize how this was going to work uh, coming down Elm Street and the Leary lot. And it's, it's, it's much more uh, uh, wonderful than I could imagine <laughs> because it, I didn't realize that it would go down the whole backside of the downtown businesses out into um, onto Main, North Main Street. So, yeah, because I was thinking, how are you going to get all those plants and all those cars on the Leary lot? <laughs> and so it seems like the Leary lot is more like an entrance. Is that how I'm seeing it? It's the whole, it's yeah. the whole parking lot. Yep. Yep. Okay. Where is the brewery and where is the uh, side street at Hempshaw's? Okay. So the brewery is up here. This is the this is the very edge of the Hemshaw building. Okay, there's okay. Right. So that's, that's going to be expanded to come closer to the the driveway that connects Elm Street to the parking lot. Yeah, it's going to be right. Uh, next it's right in this lot. space here. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's it looks wonderful, and we all know the parking is a problem, but it's more than a parking lot. It's 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 really like a a nice. Uh, town walkway, but besides parking, it it it's it's quite nice. Yeah, we're excited. We're we're really excited. I think this will definitely be a lovely addition. Yeah, and it sounds like you have uh, been getting a lot of grants, which you're all very good at. So that's very helpful, I'm sure. Well, cumulatively, they add up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's cumulatively. <laughs> And um, Jeff, just refresh. Uh, the current thinking is that El the um, access to Elm is going to be two way, and that we're going to have entrance and exit on North Main Street at least initially. I think that was the initial understanding. Yes, but you know, there's certainly the ability to change that in the future. But this is designed to handle two way traffic. If if that's you know the decision moving forward. We're we're gonna have to experiment and see how it works. What what happens in winter time when we have a lot of snow? You know, there's there's gonna be some some changes. I think probably, um, but maybe not. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna lay it out this way and see how it works. You know, the the flow of traffic. Yep. Um, if there's no more discussion on this, um. We can let Jeff go, but hopefully Lily and and that might stay for a few minutes. We uh, I would like to jump down to items unanticipated. Um, One question of Jeff oh. before you do that: sure. um, How this is a close to a final plan? So in a, in addition to finding a water source, um, how soon will we be expecting you to write an RFP, recognizing the fact that the work probably won't happen until warmer weather in this approaching the spring sure sure i think you know i think um realistically we're probably looking at a bid pack you know to have a bid package ready by the beginning of the year um right. and so i think you know iron out a few details um you know vet it once more with the town and, and dpw and anybody else that needs to weigh in and then um yeah i think be ready um at the start of the new year to to um put it out to bid do we have a uh, estimated probable cause at the cost at the moment or do or is that still in the works it's it's there's one that is started yes okay. so i need to i need to finish compiling some of those numbers because they were coming from a few different sources so yes I just like to know where we're at yeah exactly yep. we 
go out to bid. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'll try to, I'll try to um, focus on that in the next couple of weeks as well. Well, thank you. Give um, a holiday present. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, any other questions? Was there any, there, is there anyone else that had a question? Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn the hearing. Um, okay. I don't think we had to, it was just a, Oh, it wasn't a formal hearing? No. Okay. No. Um, right. But I did want to talk about the MVP stuff since we have a few minutes before our regular meeting starts. Okay. And um, uh, so, Chris. Um, Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very much for being here, Jeff. All right. Yes. Thank, Thank you Jeff. all. Yep. Take care. Um, the deadline for the MVP letter of intent is Friday. Do you have any um, indication of what the preferences were? that we could decide, decide on and give you indication to go forward with? Uh, I'm sorry, I wish I had brought my notes on that. I did do a poll and I tallied all the results up. And my recollection is that the two top projects were the um, culvert replacement for the ones that were the, the next level of priority in the town and the study of the uh, idea of a microgrid for the the campus area and then the next few after that i i can't honestly recall um well i know we're moving forward on the library and um so can you do when your letter of intent is going in is it for multiple projects yeah i was thinking you know that because there's really no cost to doing a letter of intent and we don't have to do a detailed budget that we should submit up to say five projects and just get feedback from well, the state about I would like what the eligibility looks like to give you the authority to submit for the next round of the mvp grants if it's just an indication i mean we don't have to file a formal application if we choose not to move forward but we are doing the library we are, I mean, it makes sense, the microgrid, Tim has been working very hard on the heat grant and a couple other grants, try, and, and we have been working on the campus as trying to do a geothermal central something. So that makes sense. Um, Trevor, uh, or Chris, can maybe you can put the list on the, up on the screen so that the whole select board would look at that? Because we have to make, we have to make a decision moving forward for, Chris, we don't have another sure. meeting in between. So I would like Trevor, who hasn't had an opportunity to look at the priority list, to look at the priority list and have his input. I know Tim and I voted, both voted on it because we're on the MVP me, um, committee, but um, Trevor has not. And I I've felt like that's a disadvantage to you. I would just like to give you an opportunity to look at the list. I'm just nervous about cost. This is, this is just uh, a letter of intent. I know, that we but potentially... it always just evolves into a, I know, but a cost. If we don't put the letter of intent in, then we can't apply. One of them would be um, that, that you didn't mention, Carolyn, I think the, the parking lot one, I mean, the library project's going forward and they're going to have to put parking there. And if the soils are equally good for forest, then this would be something that we would want to explore. Um, and it might lessen one expense um, since we've that's got cool. Berkshire Design um, working on this thing already. So that's the third one I would like to support. Um, they didn't support us for the Larry lot though, correct, for forest pavement. Oh, they, they are not stuff. putting in. Yeah. The, right. right, but I feel that we have, we're our story now is the storage capacity for flooding uh -huh. and if by the time that we go to apply for a grant we'll have field geology's calculations and we can use the library um storage capacity at the library for flooding as the basis for having them you know because it's a policy so it's not they're just doing the parking lot we're providing flood storage capacity and that's our story mm -hmm. and so they might and then you put tree boxes in you put green landscaping around the library that will suck up water tree boxes rain gardens all that kind of stuff 
they might approve that. Are you able to also get engineering funding as opposed to like the actual hardscaping? Is that something that MVP has supported in the past? Yeah, we, we, we have gotten in Deerfield, we've gotten funding for engineering. In fact, some of the costs of the projects that we were talking about for this year uh, are covered under the current MVP grant for engineering. So if, um, if we were able to coordinate with the library, we might be able to, you know, save some engineering money for the library by getting a grant to pay for the parking lot engineering. Um, so the money that they don't expend in, in those sorts of things can be channeled into the actual building. I know that's a lot to ask, but. Yeah, that, that portion of the engineering that goes towards the green infrastructure would be eligible. Mm -hmm. Yep. I can give you the, um, the full list of the 10 projects and how the voting has gone from our core group. Um, in terms of rankings, um, and email that to you. So we have, you know, a decision to make. So, I mean, if we're meeting tonight, do we have another meeting where we can make no. this decision or should we make the decision tonight to say these, these X eight, first three, and then, you know, based on what you've discovered, the final two, we're just saying we're interested in this. We're not saying we're going to do it. Right. Um, we're just interested in it. Right. That was the whole point of it. All right. But, At long last, I got the poll to show up. So I don't know if you want me to share the screen. Yes. Thank that you. That would be great. Sure. Thank you. So Trevor, the project, um, when Chris pulls it up, is the healthy soils. And, and the reason I am a big proponent of the healthy soils, but the state is just starting to get going. I'm on that task force. So putting that on the back burner for a few more months is not an issue. The, and this is just going through the projects. My concern with the tree nursery and the planting program, it's lovely, but our deep DPW is just out straight. And that's that really has to be a, a town... I mean, that's more labor intensive than I think we can afford this yeah, year. We don't need to be in there. Um, we have, we, the number three, the seating training and education program for climate failure. We, we are doing that under the conservation district grant. So I think that's pretty important. Um, but we, I don't think we have to say that we're going to do it as a priority, but we could list it because that would feed into maybe some purchasing of plants. Um, rare design plans for top priority of culvert replacement. Obviously, that's gotta be a top priority for us because mm -hmm. um, we're spending the money. Tim Tim uh, has talked about the microgrid um, and the geothermal for the campus uh, and we are applying for grants. So I think that's important. Um, Chris, moving on. Um, flood resiliency, we, we know we are doing work at the old Deerfield sewer treatment plant. So building in some flood resiliency and having some of that cost be underwritten by the MVP would be work. And then number seven is, uh, you know, this would be obviously flood plain, um, you know, we would support open space development right purchases through the state. But the only thing with this is that if you look along the Deerfield right now, the the two families that aren't involved or that own the parcels that are not under contract already with Franklin Land Trust or under APR are not interested at the moment. So I think this would be put on hold for a little bit. Four and six for me are really the only ones I'm interested yeah. in. Keep, keep going, Chris. Um, I think this is the library one was eight. This was my top priority because we're doing the library anyway. And so if we had the ability to do a porous pavement and then add additional flood capacity, storage capacity, at the library parking lot would be wonderful. The whole point of any of the parking lot that we're doing in the campus area, we hope would add additional storage capacity. Um, so that 
is probably right up there with culverts. And then address flooding at the Deerfield in the area of historic Deerfield. I'm uh, we're going to try to get a 604B grant in that whole north end because of the flooding. The water has changed. It's not just because we had a, a severe event. It's the water is moving differently and it's coming at a much more intense level. And we need to figure that out. So I, I think, Chris, we were going to do an M, um, and 604B, even though it's been, um, the Deerfield River's been delisted. I did do a lot of touring and had people come out this summer. And we have enough documentation from all the silting that came down on Wapping Road and then flushed out to the Deerfield River that we would be, we qualify for the program and we also um, would be competitive. So that would be kind of on hold, maybe. We haven't had a chance to really talk about this one in detail, but when I was looking at the um, flooding problems in historic Deerfield and talking to the the uh, historic Deerfield staff, they took me out back of the Deerfield Inn and showed me a specific problem area where they have a um, a real major flooding problem. And, and you may recall that the Deerfield Inn was, was damaged pretty heavily because of this flooding. Um, in basically in the parking area behind the inn, there is a um, there's a catch basin area there that is unable to handle the amount of water that's going into it. Um, and it's got a long pipe that goes down to the Deerfield River, which is, I think is also undersized. So this is not a 604B problem. It's an engineering problem. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's uh, not a town of Deerfield problem either, right? I mean, well, this is not. This is private property correct? it's private property there you go yep but but it's not not for us to that, fix. that doesn't mean we can't get mvp funding to we can't be putting it. town taxpayer money to continue to work on nonprofit old deerfield properties i just it, it it's up to it's up to the nonprofits to come together and fix their issue it's not up to our taxpayers to do that just not i thought you were talking about the flooding in the you know, because the because of this intense rain events this summer and the constant rain we've had, we had actually water coming up to the picket fence in our in our uh, on Old Main Street, right up to Old Main Street, and that has we've been addressing that. Yeah. Um, so, Trevor, I understand your point about you know taxpayer dollars, um, but yep. what if the nonprofits were providing the match money? for the grant with the town support. I just think it's staff time. It's it's us paying you. It's there's there's just a lot we're going into to fix properties. We have so much other to work on in our town that it's not our problem to address. I mean other people need to step up and get involved. I just don't think I mean the effort and our staff in town and all the efforts and we're we're struggling to get money to pay for the damage we've had this year. I just think there are so many other things to focus on than the parking lot behind a private entity. There's, there's so much more to do, and and we're already taxed beyond belief. Um, everybody's just really overworked, and there's a million things to do in town, and we just got to focus and get back to core taxpayer business. We're work for the town, and so wh where you can use it to take advantage of putting a culvert in for our property you know, fine. Or if we're doing a parking lot that you think they're going to pay for it. I just, it's a lot of money spent on consultants to get this stuff done. And I mean, we spent over a hundred thousand dollars on this year alone and we got maybe 300,000 total. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. It's taxpayer money. And we need to focus on core town business, I think. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I with 10 of these, I think we can find three we can all agree on that might have yeah. a, a, an actual benefit to the town. Four, six, and 10. Uh, approve them tonight, let you file the, the letter of interest, and then, um, you know, see whether they make sense once the... Eight, Trevor? Because the library, we're doing the library anyway. I don't, I, I just don't see it happening, but I mean, I would focus on four, six, and 10 for me, but... That's up to you. Four, I mean, I'm only one vote, so I live four, six, and ten. I thought you just. Um... I wanted. I wanted to add in eight because if we we're going to build the library, the library is happening. So if we can cut the costs of the library, then that makes sense. But also, 
I know because the library is going to be looking at costs, they're not going to pay for porous pavement. And that is a really a so we're also the, the match project. the match for this could be covered by the library uh, project itself anyway because we're going to we're going to we're going to spend much more than the twenty five percent match. Um, the library is going to be spending a lot of money on the parking lot anyway, so there's not even a match issue there. And we may not end up doing this; it might not make sense. Yeah, but the I library mean, has has been asked the the, the Tilton Building Committee has asked about engineering the savings that are are real realizable by not having to build underground infrastructure that needs constant repair um and do porous pavement so that's already part of the calculation and may end up as an alternate in the actual bid package but tree box filters etc might make sense there too i don't see any harm in looking at it and we don't have to but i agree with you trevor um historic deerfield and um you know whether it's Bement or DA that has a you know an issue with flooding in that back thing, um, they have a they have a way to find a solution to it, yeah. and they could work together on it. At least at this point, we I don't see us doing it. Yeah. So Chris, uh, if you look back, ten, eight, and then, um. Six, because that's a p potentially what we're going to do. Five is what, Tim, you were interested in? Was that? Oh, yeah. I mean, my my order was green parking lot amenities was number one. Design paint, it could go either way. Culverts and feasibility for microgrid were my three top choices. Um, you know, so the parking lot could go to the bottom. And the, the the culverts are very important, and the microgrid could potentially be very important. I mean, the police station's here, so if power goes out, you want the police station to be able to function and, uh, you know, be able to stay connected. Well, we do have a generator, but yeah. long term, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And <laughs> my, my, priority, my priorities were the um, parking lot for the library, because we could reduce the cost. For, that's going forward. The sewer treatment plant that's going forward eventually, so that makes sense. Um, the culverts, absolutely, because we have probably close to a few hundred that we need to replace all over the place. Um, still, I mean, we have about thirty five hundred culverts. <sighs> um, Trevor, did you mention? Did you mention the uh, the Green Street's visioning. Yes. Was that one that you were in favor of? I think that was, yeah. think that was yeah. my fourth one too. Yeah. So so Chris, what was the first couple? I think I'm missing one of my top ones. Um oh no. Okay. So we're all on the same page. Did you get those, Chris? I did. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I think I think the select board is in all agreement with that then. That's and four, right? I'm sorry. Did you get four or five? I got five. Okay. I got four, five, six, eight, and ten. That, and and do you feel just off the top of your head that sort of picks up what people were talking about in general? I, I think so. I'd like to confirm that with you and by email if that's possible, just sure. in case the committee had a strong sense of one of the other projects. But all right. Um, uh, but I, I we, do think it probably is pretty close. Yeah. I mean, in the absence of being able to hold a vote, you got to file something. Right. If you miss right. the deadline, right. you miss yeah. the deadline. Yeah. So, um, yeah, confirm. I, I, I think. And again, it doesn't is... preclude us doing something different when the grant comes around. Right. Right. So it just says we're interested in participating somehow. And these yeah. are the ideas we're currently thinking about. And we get some feedback. Yeah. yeah. And then we can talk about it further. We've, we've got a few months to work with it. OK, thank you. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you very much. Um, okay, moving on. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Stan Adams and uh, his crew, the, uh, the Friends of Deerfield, for the lovely um, presentation on Sunday uh, and Kathy Thomas um, catering did for the open house of the churches. It was just a lovely, lovely tour. 
Um, I had never been in to the um, Holy Spirit Ukrainian Catholic Church across from um, Holy Family, and it, and it really was lovely. And and so we're hoping that um, we will be able to get the FCAT will have the capacity for for Jonathan and his staff um, to uh, tape holiday services at all the churches. And so we can archive them for our 350th. It was very lovely, and um, people had a really lovely day, I think. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, it was yeah. Great. great. Great to meet people and, and see how everyone worships differently, but the same. Yeah, but it, it was just, um, it was very beautiful. Gorgeous, you know, churches. Yeah. So we want to thank, again, it was a lovely experience. Yep. Um, we want to, it's Kevin, Kevin, I see Kevin's on. Good. We'd like to do a quick road update. I also just want to say, please do not call Kevin. Don't even call Chris and Casey and complain about the sidewalks. You can call and complain to me. My number is 774-5824. But I will tell you right up front, the first question I will ask you is, did you vote? So there's nothing I can say is that if you hadn't participated, then we cannot add a contract to additional contracts to deficit spend on purpose. And what happens is, is Kevin Kolakowski is the one that runs our sidewalk machines. He has a regular route, which is between 12 and 16 hours, depending on the storm. He then has about five hours of cleaning the sidewalks. When we yeah. voted October 23rd to pick up Snowberry Court and, um, Greylock that adds about three hours to his workload. You can't ask someone, one of our our guys, to do that kind of work. It's just it's just too much. So Kevin was and has been looking for a contractor to do the, clear the sidewalks because the vote failed and he hadn't had that contract signed. Um, any because he hasn't been able to find anyone, then. That's why the sidewalks haven't aren't going to be cleared, and I just want to be clear that that was a decision, uh, basically pushed by me. So people can complain to me, as the main person. It's because we are already deficit spending. We are already committed to over three million dollars just to keep the roads open, and we are going to be talking to Kevin right now about what are we going to do with River Road, and. We cannot keep just spending more deficit spending because your snow and ice removal account is a deficit spending. We are authorized to deficit spend. So that's what the story is right now. I don't. So, Kevin. <laughs> well, one moment before we get into Kevin. Um, okay. It's six o'clock. We have on the here public comment. So I see some people in right. the audience and I want to see if they have two minutes worth of comment they want to make. Jeff. You can Welcome. only complain to me for two minutes. <laughs> no, I'm not complaining. Hi, Jeff. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Jeff Upton, uh, Hillcrest Ave, Deerfield. And uh, it's funny that you're talking about this because I was given this some thought. And I may have a suggestion to help with the uh, clearing of snow on the sidewalks. And it's going to require thinking outside the box a little bit. And uh, Kevin, Kevin may be a little nervous about this, but what I'm going to suggest is that there is a program out there that uh, allows seniors to have a property tax reduction. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that they work for the town and they can reduce their property taxes. And I'm just checking. I'm still trying to find all the details of this they can reduce their property taxes up to $1,200. Now, a lot of towns are paying a minimum wage for seniors to do work. So they're into this program and it allows them to work X amount of hours. And uh, right now, I think you might be a uh, minimum wage is what they're paying. So you might be like around 80 hours or whatever. My thought process, and again, if we think a little bit outside the box is that possibly because the highway crew is overloaded, 
that we could get involved with this program, find two, three, maybe four seniors, little training, and they could clear the sidewalks for minimal dollar amounts. Mm -hmm. And it'd be safe for everybody. Also, the vehicle over there, the piece of equipment, I think it was around 100,000, 105,000, mm -hmm. instead of sitting there and not being used, could be put to use because the taxpayers did approve that. And uh, I sat on the capital committee at that time and I even agreed to it, mm -hmm. believe it or not. <laughs> so, uh, but I think, I think that might be a possibility. Uh, I know the town obviously has uh, uh, an umbrella insurance policy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'd have to check into that as far as liability, but I really believe that we have seniors qualified, seeing how we're in this community that we are, right. that know how to run equipment sure. and sure. could probably do a real good job. And it would relieve the highway department of that burden. And it would be at a minimal cost to the town. And the piece of equipment that was approved by voters will actually be put to use. So I know it takes a little bit of thinking outside the box, but it may be a solution to the snow removal uh, situation with the sidewalks. And I think it could be a win-win-win for everybody because nowadays with money being tight, mm -hmm. I think you could get some seniors with some pretty decent knowledge and a little training and be able to run that piece of equipment. Just the thought. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for thinking about it, because we are trying to figure this out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kevin, I didn't want to, we have uh, only a few minutes, and I, I don't want to keep you, but I really feel it's critically important that we talk about River Road a little bit. Um, yesterday, uh, I met with- Carolyn, I just want to make sure you, you gentlemen don't have anything you want to say, do you? You're here for the tobacco regs, right? Uh, okay, yeah. good. Thank you. Um, Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay um, had a meeting with us yesterday, or with me, um, with the Undersecretary for um, Economic Development and Juan um, Vega, who handles Mass Works and Mass DOT. And um, some good news was that, yes, we're going to be eligible for Mass Works. They're going to support us 100%. However, I had forgotten that the 10% set aside for rural um, communities, which is where we got our Mass Works grant before, uh, has a cap of a million. And it just happened that that project was 976,000. So it didn't really register in my mind that there was a cap. And so that was reminded me of the cap. But what came out of that meeting yesterday is that the Mass DOT people came and did a site visit this morning with John Pachorek and they are gonna replace the culverts on five and 10, and that is moving forward. So um, the way they figured it out, they're gonna put wider culverts, open bottom culverts in rather than oh. what is there, taller. So that would be able to handle the capacity and pass through what is coming down off the hill. Hmm. So that's very, very exciting. And I have to say that Joe and Natalie have worked so hard and have been working so wonderfully with us. and. Hopefully we're going to hear about the supplemental bill. Mm -hmm. It's just, again, I must impress that the House, what ended up in the supplemental bill was the Senate um, language, which included storms for North Andover in August and Lemonstern Fitchburg on September 11th. So what happens is that $15 million, we know off the top, 2 million is earmarked for Lemonster. It goes down to 13 and then we're sharing instead of with the, just the 12 communities out here in the July storms, we're picking up the others. So I don't know what we're gonna end up with. We could end up with what we really spent or we could end up with just a token. And that's why this is these discussions are so serious. Mm -hmm. So before we run out of time, Kevin on River Road, um, have we heard back from the two engineers that toured from Chris Bush, uh, Bussard? Nope, not yet. Okay. Um, I reached actually I reached out to both of them today um and uh basically it was email I hadn't got anything back wow. yet 
but what I'm getting out of it is, is <coughs> Jimmy, one of the thing, one of the parts that we're looking at, um, which really isn't the part that we're let me lean back up. The information that they're looking for is for the failure section in front of Kalashevsky's house, which was part of the original Mass Works grant. Yes. So that part they're looking for. So I told them, I says, okay, I says, go off of that because we're still looking for it because I believe it's somewhere in the Connex box that's outside. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take to find it. Um, okay. With that being said, you know, because obviously after that, you know, because we don't have anything electronic, you know, I reached out to Weston and Sampson. Weston and Sampson, they've already sold that division. Well, they sold it once. It's been sold four more times. There's no more information. Yeah. Um, Ten years. It's 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 just a little bit difficult to try and find it. So long story short is is we need to go ahead and, and go through the Conix box to try and find that for that part of it. But I told him I said, we'll move on to the others because that's what we're really concerned about at this point. You know, Kalashevsky's, is it moving? Yes. Um, but is it uh as critical as it is further up? No, definitely not. So they're supposed to be working on it. Both both of them are supposed to be working on it. Um, the DOT meeting this morning, yes, um, it was a great meeting. We went through, we showed them the different areas where the water was coming from, what we did, um, explained to them that, you know, we didn't go any, any lower than we were before. You know, we, any of the crossings that were there, we did was on top of the concrete, um, which was basically the, the base of the culvert, original culvert that the state had put in, because that originally was the state five and 10, you know, back in the what, forties, fifties or whatever it was. Um, that being said, they, they understand where the water's coming from. <clears throat> I explained to my students, you're not getting any more water from us. You may be getting more velocity, but you're not getting any more water because you're going to get the same amount of water, whether it goes through my pipe or goes through my pipe and goes over the road into you, you're still going to get the same amount of water, but the velocity has changed. And if you look at where, where we've cleaned out the, the, the other side on, again, on whopping, sorry, I know I'm kind of getting away from from River Road, but Wapping is very important. Uh, the west side, if that stays clean, which is what we're trying to get part of our, our, uh, our oh God, what is it? Um, the blanket NOL. Um, with that being said, if we can make that part of our, mm -hmm. our, our permanent maintenance program, their pipe will stay clean. Because if you looked at some of the photos before, you could barely see through it. Now what we have done, we've changed our velocity and we've had cleaned out the other side. Their pipe is almost completely clean. So, which is good. That being said, they still understand that the volume has changed and it's going to continue to change. And then that's why they're going to end up going with actually a four-sided box culvert is what I was told. They says oh, that okay. the state doesn't do three-sided anymore. Now they're being told to do four-sided. And this was from their environmental person that was there on site. Okay, no, that's fine. So is four-sided mean it's got concrete on the bottom? The yep, two sides it looks top. like a box. You, okay. you, take, yeah. you take a big, long box and you just lay it down. Small bridge. Right. Yeah, basically. Um, so that's where we're at there. Uh, Hoosick Road. Um, Hoosick Road, hopefully by Thursday of next week, uh, will be like, to the point of, I'm having contractors move off. The cost of a guardrail system is going to be less than $12,000. <laughs> My recommendation is to not open the road until there's guardrail put in there because of what it is, where it is. And um, it's it's definitely a lie. You're going to have to still plow up. So there's no savings in plowing, really. Right. No, no. I mean, basically, okay. if, if if I if I don't plow that last section, the only thing the only thing I'm not plowing is what a uh, thousand feet. Okay. So whether we open a Hoosick Road or not is the is the cost of the additional twelve thousand for guardrails. Guard Correct. And okay. there's no way that you could you could use Jersey barriers. That wouldn't be practical. No, no, no. So no I would. I, but you know, I uh, let me put this way. I welcome anybody to go up and, and look at the site and, and give any type of recommendations they may give. It would be probably the easiest way of saying it. Well, I, I I'll do that. I'll take a look. Okay, cool. No, that'd be great. Um, you know, uh again, it's gotta be protected. And like I said, once you see it, and 
if you go up within the next couple of days, you know, because they're not going to be back in there because they just finished pouring the, the second head wall. They have to wait till at least Friday right. before they can start back milling. So you're going to not see the complete picture of what it's going to look like, but right. just imagine everything backfilled completely. Right. Right. Um, and then, like <clears> I said, <throat> um, my, my concern is, is the Southern coming to us from Conway. Uh, somebody comes into that corner hot. They're going right down inside. Um, right. You know, could we put some Jersey barriers right there? Yeah. Uh, could we do it? We we would end up having to do the entire west side of the road. Um, I I have to say it doesn't, Trevor. Unless you have a real problem with it, we're already. I mean, we're already spending money to to fix who you know. We already gotten committed to who's it before we had the vote. So if if twelve thousand is the only difference between opening and closing it, I, I feel like we have to pay the 12000 just to get it open. Or do you not want to? Do you want to just, I just wait? I want a commitment that we have some money coming in before okay. we keep spending. All right. No, I mean, I no, feel like no, I said, I know, I understand. I just want to make sure. Do you feel the same way, Tim? Yeah, you know, it's it's not, it's easy to justify doing it because it makes right. sense and it's a public safety thing. But, you know, um, until we can convince the residents of town that, we have no choice. You, it, some somebody made a comment that we should budget for this, and I said, "How do you budget for a natural disaster?" Well, that, that would be do you say I'm going to put a five million dollar fund aside that, in case we have a hurricane, and then we're going to put your put five million on your taxes and sit it in the bank and wait right. until a hurricane comes? I mean, this was a natural disaster, destroyed vast quantity of our roads, and. People decided because they're upset about other spending that they voted, no, we're not going to help our neighbors and fix our roads. It's not a tenable position. It's not logical. It's, so we're, we're I agree. Time. We're we're already already out of time. Time. Quick. I'm just going to say we're constantly maligned for having slush funds, right? So we're not going to put $3 million in a slush fund and tax you and then Every set year. it aside just in case we have yeah. a disaster. That doesn't make any and sense. One of the reasons why we're asking for money is because the the government, believe it or not, is being run on a very lean budget. You might not agree with all the spending, but there's not a lot of money in everybody's pocket trying to figure out, oh, we can pull from here and we can pull from here and some, somehow we're going to solve the problem. If we don't raise the money, there is going to be 2 or $3 million. And if the state doesn't give us any money, there's going to be a 2 or $3 million bill that we owe, and it has to be paid by June 30th. And it's creating a cash flow problem now, which we can manage but eventually it's going to create a deficit problem. So this, we need to get a positive vote. This this is from Are they me. sticky buns? No, no, they're not sticky buns. This is from me, no town money. Um, and this is under the new bill that Natalie and Joe has filed. You, We're going to have rain gauges. Mm -hmm. Mine is, and I am a certified weather spotter, so <laughs> we can put in my numbers, but... You do it at your house, you do it at your house, and I have one for John Pachork, so that we can call in for these events. Under the new gap storm coverage, we will be able to do this. But in the meantime, we got only, we're already running late, right. and I really need Kevin Let's... to, Kevin, so when you hear from those um, engineers, <laughs> I, uh, Tim and I are, are here for um, a meeting on the 18th. That's a posted meeting already uh, mm -hmm. for as an MVP. So, uh, and Trevor could call in if he's concerned, but we, and I'm just looking at next week, uh, potentially we could, we could do a meeting on Thursday morning, post it, but we, we've got to figure out what we're going to do for River Road. Now, Jersey berries, we cannot use Jersey berries on the side because it's going to be too much weight on it. It's, it's going to push it down because that area that we just tried yeah. to fix is, is it's it's failing again. Right. So what I'm, and then we have this huge giant rainstorm this Sunday. That's why this, I got this. Um, but so what I'm thinking of is, is that section, is that less than 98 feet? Of course it is. <laughs> How much? Of course it is. Okay, we we can't we can't go over. It no, has can't to go over 100 feet. feet. It's 98 feet. Right, we can't go over 98 feet. feet. It triggers no, the Army Corps. Yep. No. So no. I, I'm thinking that Darren Gray 
we might be able to, who lives in town as an engineer, might be willing to meet with us when we figure out, if we get more information from those engineers and we could figure out how to, we use a lot of fabric, we use a lot of uh, heavy big rock, and we could figure out what we were gonna do in that one little section and we could do it for fairly cheap if we knew we were getting some money from the state in the next two or three weeks. The problem is once winter comes, it's too late. So I, I'm not sure, did Trevor or Tim, do you have- Can you make it a one-way road? That's what yeah. I was gonna suggest. I, I, I can, um, when, when that does happen, I will have to look into how much uh, signaling will be. Right. Yeah, I'd rather spend five thousand dollars on signaling than than yeah. un, undesignated amount on right. until we actually figure out what's wrong with the road. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's we have to stop spending. You know, we we've sort of gave a blank check and necessarily, but until we get a clearer picture. And look, we just got notification that the farmers are starting to get money from the twenty million that was appropriated in July. So it's going to take five months, four or five months before we're going to know if we're going to get any money or if Lemonster and Fitchburg and North Adams are going to take all the money. So we really need to, you know, think very carefully about any, any other expenses. And I would say mm -hmm. one lane road is probably the best choice we have right now. Kevin, you're, can you, can you pursue that then? Yep. Yeah, I'll take okay. care of that. Um, and we and, and, what, and I'll 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 forward that information off to everybody, just right. as a as a information only. That'd be great. And we Thank could you. vote that, uh, Chris Nolan. Could you put that on the agenda for Monday's MVP meeting so that, um, and Trevor, make sure you let Chris know what you whatever information you mm -hmm. want. From, then we'll vote sure. that to authorize Kevin to do that, because that I mean we just have to do something. It's not going to last the winter. We already know that. Um, is there any other road that uh, you were going to close depot, right? That Correct. Yeah, no, we're definitely putting Jersey barriers there. Um, the deterioration of that embankment is getting worse. Um, it's not a very used road. And looking at the situation, the railroad will have to do something here fairly shortly to that ravine because it's going to be affecting the rail. So if we just shut down that section for a while, it would be very nice if, because the railroad has to fix their own problem, now our problem's fixed at the same time. Okay. That, uh, that, 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 that's, that's kind of our thought process. Okay, so we missed the uh, deadline for the Division of Ecological uh, Resources cycle for Hawks Road. Is Hawks Road buttoned up for the winter? It'll get through the winter, but it still needs drainage. You know, it still needs to be paved. The pay part is horrible. Um, you know, I do have to make like a, a general comment is I know there's a few people that, that are upset that they can't go crossways or, or two cars in the road. <laughs> um, that road is, is technically, according to Mass DOT, a municipal type two, which is a one lane road. Um, so according to DOT, that is a single lane. It's not a two lane. So um, I know, just but basic sure, information like that, that, that we haven't fixed it, but we miss, we couldn't hire an engineer because of the boat was, you know, so we're going to miss the deadline for that grant. Well, okay. you, you've got, you've, you've got major issues there, you know, because either you're going to raise the road or, or you're going to end up having to drill and blast because once you re get near the top, the reason why you get that little hump as you're getting near the top, it's all ledge and you're within probably four and a half inches of it. Kevin, yeah. that's why it has to be a grant because it's over a yeah. million dollars. Oh, it's oh, it's gonna it'll be expensive. There's no doubt about it. And then you gotta think about you can have guardrail all the way down that side too. I know, I know. Um the Matthews yeah. Road is okay. Yep, yeah, Matthews Road is is holding up. Um, you know, is there gonna be an issue in the pro in, in the future? Uh Again, you know, all, yeah, all depends on what you get for volume. I mean, if we get a ton of volume like we did this last time, I mean, I don't care what we had there. It's not going to hold it, and, and we're going to have right. another problem. Keats um, Road, is Keats Road okay for the winter? Yeah, Keats should be tied up. Uh, Keats Cross Road should be tied up without a problem. Um, Are you, you know, Pine, Nook, Pine, Pine, Nook, Pine Nook's been taken care of. Uh we shouldn't have too much of an issue over there on County Road, you know, because it seems like the, the sinkhole is, has slowed down. 
Um, but we'll see just how much it slowed down. And that's another area that the engineers looked at. Um, the pipe is, it, it's a metal pipe. It's um, deteriorated where I actually have four and a half inch rip wrap that has come through the pipe and is now blocking. Right. Because material that was put in the hole because of the sinkhole over the years. Can you put, are you going to put a Jersey barrier on upper road where those cones are? And the missing yes. Yeah. Actually where the cones are. Oh wait. I uh, mean the barrels by the, by the, well, at the end of Hawks road, there's, there's a missing guardrail there. Oh yeah, no, there's, there's new guardrail. That guardrail is being, that's already been part of the process. Now all that guardrail is being done on um, Monday and Tuesday. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, no, that's, that's. Are you yeah. going to put Jersey barriers on Little Meadow Road for the winter? We can. I think you should um, put a couple at least just to keep people away from the edge. Yeah, we could do that. You know, again, you know, I, I'm a little nervous about putting more weight on there because I really don't know how much that area is, is, actually undercut but i mean we we can make we can keep an eye on it you know and if we have to then we just bump the road maybe over a little barrels, bit maybe you can put some barrels on then or something yeah i think that'd be a better choice the problem is it has limited traffic but you might have traffic that people don't know what the heck's going on yep exactly you know and the other thing when you're talking about jersey barriers for river road you know we can't we can't put any we can't put any heavy weight on that first one um, just because it, it obviously we know that it's failing and we're just going to, it'll make it fail even worse. We're not going to spend the money on the guardrails, but we are investigating trying to get the long DOT approved aluminum, um, barriers that they now use that are, it, it's an approved barrier. Um, and it's like a 16th of the weight. Okay. So, you know, we, we, we tried looking out to what, what, they had in the yard and, and what they've got in the yard is being used. So did really you need any more um, decisions from us tonight? Going, forward? I think I'm, I think I'm in good shape. Um, the only thing that's probably going to be sitting in front of you, Carolyn is going to be the uh, um, transfer station inspection. You're going to have to sign off on it. There you've got like, I don't know, five or seven copies you need to sign off on. And basically all that is, is just for, uh, the two things they need, we need a new sign out front um, saying the the hazmat waste ban, which has already been ordered, and the um, uh, uh, detector has to be inside that building, and uh, okay. that's what we put in. So those are the two things that are being, being taken care of right away, so you can sign off on that so we can get that uh, information back to the DEP. Right. Other than that, I, I'm in good shape. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, very cool. Thank you all. Have a great night. You too. Um, I apologize that we're late for the tobacco regs. Um, we just wanted to make sure that we got some update on our roads. Um, so public hearing will be held by the Deerfield Board of Health during this regular scheduled meeting via Zoom and in person at the Municipal Offices of A Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. on December 13th at uh, December 13th, 2023 at 6.15. It actually will be 6.30 to consider the adopting of tobacco regulations entitled Regulations of Deerfield Board of Health Restricting the Sale of Tobacco Products. Meetings normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and were required a public participation provided in accordance with um, House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Pursuant to General Laws 20, Ch Chapter 30A, participants intending to tape the meeting must identify themselves with their name and address for the record to our clerk. Thank you. We'll open the hearing. Okay. Um, we have uh, Valerie, would you like to walk us through this, please? Um, I have to say, it sounds like we don't have a lot of choice if we are we either adopt the state regs or uh or not that is correct 
Um, there are two major changes here. The state regs have to do with the fines and the tolling period. The fines are set at the first violation, $1,000. The second violation is $2,000, and the third or more violations are $5,000. Now, Valerie, the can I interrupt you for a second? Sure. Can you just please identify yourself as our health agent and so forth? Yes, I'm and sorry. Full name? I'm sorry. I'm Valerie Bird. I'm your health agent for the, the town of Deerfield. Um, I also did deliver, just so you know, I delivered the... Um, the proposed tobacco regulations to all six of, of the tobacco uh, retail places. Thank you. Okay, so you, Valerie. Okay, so and the tolling period you you can change. The tolling period is a suspension time. Mm -hmm. That if if you wish to deviate from that, you're allowed to do that. But the minimum fines are are the minimum fines this is the state regulation and and that that's basically it that those are the those are the two major changes the amount of the fine and the uh, suspension period currently um your tobacco regulations are from 2017 and the fine is a hundred dollars for the first offense, I'm not even sure what the second offense is, but there's actually no um, suspension period also. I know this is steep, but it's geared to prevent the sales to children, to those under 21. Valerie, did you have any response or did you have any discussion with any of the the uh, businesses that sell cigarettes about what they thought about the the thousand dollar fine for for not i i i did i had um discussion with all six of them and um most of them i'm gonna say five out of six knew about the state regulations and were surprised that we did not adopt those as yet um one place um i don't want to give out names but one place that did receive a tobacco violation was in favor of, of the new tobacco regulations. Right. Thank you. And I, I don't know who's here in, in support of it or in, if they have any questions regarding it. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and um, tell us what's on your mind. Hi. Uh, my name is Jake Brennan. I'm one of the speak closer to the mic. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is Jake Brennan. I'm one of the managers at the Deerfield Spirit Shop. Um, just wanted to acknowledge and apologize our role in spurring this into motion. Uh, the, the safe sale of all of our products is our most important job that we ultimately take the most serious aspect of our job. Um, all of our clerks go through training but um, it's a constant conversation we have to have with them to stay completely on guard. Mm -hmm. um, and we, yes, we do fully support putting this into motion for sure. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jake, for acknowledging that, uh, you know, this is a concern. We know most businesses want, you know, both alcohol and tobacco to be controlled as the law requires. And so thank you for stating that publicly here. Thank you. Um, so uh, just a question I had on the on the time of the suspensions, I, I think. Um, so right now, the uh, permits for the first defense, the permits shall be suspended for uh, three consecutive days. Um, the second is seven days and the third is 30 days. And I wanted to um, is that the Valerie, was that what you were saying we could adjust if we wanted to or can we yes. say up to yes. those dates or you can do more or less or uh, you could do more or less okay i mean they seem kind of on target um i mean if you get to third by vi three violations within three years um i have to say up at that point well we had voted and it was a different board but we had voted to retire um tobacco licenses as people went out of business or changed or whatever. And so we are down to six. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if we really want to change what the state guidelines are because 
Yeah, I know. I mean, we could. I still. Does it say? I mean, where is it? Where is it? Uh, on the page. Does uh, it say up 11. to eleven. Eleven. Yeah, page eleven. It goes from ten into eleven, but. Okay. Oh, 10, you know why? Because 10. I had I had this wrong. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, no, I had it turned around. Okay. Um, so you have three for the first, seven yeah. for the second. I think that makes sense to me. I don't. Oh yeah. I don't. I'm. And then these other for violations of other specific sections specific to the town Deerfield. What are the other? The, other the only fines? thing we could do is we could put in up for. 30 days or up four instead of four, seven day, you know, cause we don't have a, if you, if you vote it the way it is, it's seven days mm -hmm. say, or 30 days. But we can um, do up two. Yeah. But if we just added up two, that gives a little bit of wiggle room for external, you know, any mm -hmm. kind of extraordinary circumstances that happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I have no objection. I mean, as long as it, Valerie, do you know if it's legal for us to insert language into this to say up to seven days, up to 30 days? You could insert any language that you want. These are your regulations. They've been geared to, to you. Mm -hmm. Just the, the only thing that you can't change is is the amount of the fines. The fee structure, yeah. The okay. fee structure, correct. Um, well, I would, if you think that's a good idea, Trevor? Yeah, I do. I think because that gives us a little flexibility on the on the suspension, but fines are what they are yeah so should we um in each of those instances do we want to say for up to three days yep. for up to seven days yep i'll make i'll make a motion to adjust the um the the time the language for the uh, section a up to three consecutive business days and b uh up to seven consecutive business days and in section c up to 30 consecutive business days um did you second it? No, I was, I was yeah, I'll second it for discussion, but then okay. I wanted to ask um so up to who is the deciding agency then? This the board. board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we would take a recommendation. Yeah, we would work with Valerie to, to, to determine. Be a hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It, well, yeah. You, what you would do is have a hearing to determine what actually happened and why it happened. So I guess that's a question. Um, before we didn't really have hearings, um, in this case now, um, do, uh, I, I think for the first one you do not, but do the others you have hearings for? Valerie, do you remember? I know originally we didn't this last time, it was just a, a fee in the right. You, we did not have a hearing, but I believe for all three um, tobacco violations, you, you, you have a hearing you and when you have okay. a hearing, you'll have the tobacco coalition from Northampton. The one that does the sting operation yeah. will come up when okay. we, when we have the hearing and, and, and they'll present, present the evidence. So uh, if, if for instance, I, mm -hmm. this, just so I educate myself, um, an incident may occur on, you know, one month and it's discovered and then the actual fine and the suspension will be taken up after a hearing is that what what happens valerie yes okay it's much more of a process than we i mean we had no process yes yeah. and i do have a comment about that i think tim had a question about the other violations what are the other violations mm -hmm. um and number two on your page 11. Yep. and the other violations would be sales um menthol flavored tobaccos um cigars in the correct not the correct amount okay um selling loose cigarettes all those the um the three violations that we're talking about are all sales to minors. All okay. the other violations fall under number two. Okay. All right. I want to prove that just the language changed. Yeah. So it, it was approved and seconded. All uh, those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, is there any other comments anyone wants to make on this? Um on the whole thing yeah there is, before we i guess there is change on the cigar sales right um yeah that no person so shall uh shall sell or distribute or cause to be sold or distributed a single cigar unless such cigar is uh priced for retail sale at two dollars and ninety cents or more and then um 
no person sell, sell or distribute or cause to be sold or distributed any original factory wrap package of two or more cigars unless such package is priced at 580 or more. And then... Um, it, it, what you're trying to do is discourage... Yeah, single. Single, single purchase. Sell, yeah, single sales. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's... I'm good with that then. Um, so I will take a motion to close the hearing. A motion to close the hearing. Second. No oh. other comments, right? There... No other comments. All right. All those in favor? Tim LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, all right. So now um, I will consider a vote to adopt the regulations with the amended um, language. I'll make a motion to approve the, um, the updated um, sale tobacco products uh, regulations. Second. Um, is there any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And these regulations will take effect January 1st, 2024. Yes. Um, we adopted as Valerie proposed. Thank um, you for your thank trip, you Valerie. very, very much, Valerie. I'm I'm so um, pleased the way you're handling the workload, and we just want to say thank you very, very much for all you're doing. Seriously, you're very welcome. I just want to ma make a a comment that um, a copy of those minutes and the original newspaper legal ad. And a copy of the regulations needs to go to the central register in Boston. And Chris has that address. Okay. Yep. I'll okay. make sure that happens. Okay. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to update us on, Valerie? Yes. I did give you, I left in your box um, a copy of the, the database. Uh, yep. yeah. the, all the it's it's a long yeah that one that yep. Trevor yep. has um that that gives you the inspections the inspection dates uh first and second inspection of the places that we've inspected myself and Alex did some prior to my um being employed thank so, you this is great the, right um there was a couple that I did today and there's one more I think that's email addresses Trevor. Yep, yep, on the back. It's just those. Okay, so um, first inspection, second inspection are, are the dates. Great. Thank you so much, Valerie. You're welcome. This is a lot of work. It's great. It's nice to see it all done. Yes. And captured. There is one down at the bottom that I was not able to get in touch with, but I'm going to meet with her next week. So she'll get her second, she'll get her inspection. Okay. I see that. Yep. The fact it's under the W. Yes. yes, I see that. Thank, thank you for being up to date. This is you're welcome. Uh, end of the year, to everything's done. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's great. Okay, it's um, I just do have one announcement. Uh, I just want to say because it's a donation, um, the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District, John Briggs, the superintendent, has been going over the database of, um you know, like Google pictures and the Bing and all that and cross-referencing. And he's narrowed down. Um, we've had an awful lot of menorah mosquitoes captured this summer, which is the ones that carry Tripoli. And it's been so wet. It's been really concerning. So he has been using some hours uh, donated to us uh, to investigate crypts, the crypts of the menorahs that are good up to three or four years. So another, if we had another wet year next year or three years from now, they get reactivated and they come out. So um, he has been trying to target them. And so far he has not found any active crypts, which is so very exciting. And I just want to thank him for his work and he will target the ones that he does find if he continues to do this. And how do you spell that? Crips, cricks, crips, like you know, a crip, uh, oh, like the crypt, yeah, where mummies hang out. Yeah, uh, I was wondering if it was crips and bloods, you yeah, know, because no, no, mosquitoes, you know, no, okay, those would have been interesting minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a crip, it is a crip. That's a, I'm not supposed to word. know about crips and bloods, anyway. Uh, I don't know. Well, mosquitoes anyway, I just bloods. want to thank John because he's he's doing a lot of extra you, work John. for us. <laughs> um, minutes of uh, December 8th. 
did everyone have a chance to look at those? Yes. Um, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, minutes of December 8th, 2023 as written. I'll second the minutes. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? MLG, aye. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, next time on the agenda is a uh, P3 project planning professionals OPM contract extension amendment for review and approval. Can I ask um, Casey to explain, give us a little. Give you an outline. Yeah, okay. and I notice in particular the uh, $265,000 sum is that. Is that the total of his contract or is there yet another thing coming in the future? I think that's the total, but I will say before you, um, I'll explain a little bit, Thank but you. there will be, I had an exchange with council throughout the day there. They've sent along some more information they would like P3 to consider. So I'm going to send that to them. I wasn't able to get that out today, but effectively what this is, is this is the owner's project management contract to allow us to have this oversight for a multi-million dollar renovation and rehab for the library. So the OPM has a certain role mm -hmm. and this is supposed to sort of outline what that role is, but there will be additional language and that language will be um, referencing some of the state requirements as well as the state grant. So you'll see another version of this and I'm actually gonna ask you, I already told Dan and his associate Anna, um, that I would ask you guys to talk about this on the 27th. I want them to have time. Effectively, this outlines what we can expect from the OPM to provide both an oversight for architect and the construction, the architect, really the design phase and construction, but also you know, what we should expect throughout those conversations. So it's it's intended to Very be a document. We did with DPC at the sewer plant. Yes. And yeah. They had a person yes, on site that's exactly what it is. all the time. So we didn't have to be there. And then we meet every month and they explain all the things that were, they did and what they're doing. Yeah. To answer I mean, questions. So they go just, between I mean, the you you and help us work. problem solve things. I can't things. be there every, there every day. No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and really to help us problem solve things. That's the job of the OPM. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that, yes, this is the, the, most of what you could expect, there's additional supplemental language that council wants them to consider. So hopefully I answered most of those questions. I need to, there is a conversation I eventually have to have. So you you don't week. want us to vote on it until you get that. So vote. here's my thought. Um, it really depends on how comfortable you are. I really would like you to be able to read that supplemental language. So I would prefer to do it for the 27th. Let, was, let's let's put yeah. those is this, um was there a figure already figured into the project for this amount, this OPM work, right? I mean, it was already yes, budgeted, Yes, it was right? already figured in. I know in. he's adding some to it because there is some additional oversight that we're doing. There is some additional oversight I we just can see, so. the delta was between those two numbers. What, oh, what see, we I don't, budgeted. See, I just want to make sure this is all of it. so long, I don't have all that reference. So let me talk to Dan after I send him the language. I want to make sure that we're not. Let's, let's okay. put, it on for the put it on for the 27th. Yeah. Casey? Yes. Okay. We'll put yeah, I think he that. was hired um, by the library when they were looking. When they could, were first exploring. Yeah. So like maybe right. before some of us were elected, certainly before I was. Yeah. They Yes. This is back in 2015. Right. Um, the OPM was hired through the through a process the library had to go through. And now this is the oversight for the project. Right. And so it sat, it basically sits until they're approved through the state mm -hmm. project fund. Yeah. Um, and then everything gets recycled, just like we just we talked about with the Johnson Roberts contract. Mm -hmm. It sat for quite a while. Right. So some of these numbers aren't necessarily reflective of changes in a seven year period. Right. So that's okay. to your to your question. I I do want to talk to Dan about that. All right. Let me just write myself a note to do that. Um Casey, the memo for the bud the next item on the agenda is the budget memo. Yep. To department heads. I don't have uh, a printout. Do. Sorry. Okay. I had something interrupt me today and I wasn't able to get that printed. Um so you guys can, can take a look at it. It's substantially the same with 
tweaks that Tim made. Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. The only it's concern I had, there was a spelling error and there was a, I don't have my marked up thing, but let's see. There was a word missing like the or something. Do you know where it was? It what was paragraph it was in? It was somewhere it was in, in the our mail, but not. So it wasn't in the first paragraph? No. It wasn't in the second paragraph? I don't believe so. It was the one where Trevor added the, in a sentence. Uh, oh, okay. I don't even remember. When I read it, I didn't even remember which, which oh, sentence he was. I know we need to get that. DEP wants us doing that pronto. So, so why don't we approve it and then just slide it at your convenience? Okay. If you guys need to talk about We'll talk also. about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to go look on my desk. All right. Trevor, where, would you, where, was, where did you um, put that sentence that you added in? Um. I think there was some oh, it uh, is the or something is missing for I mean, there, there was a missing okay so it's the third sentence into the third paragraph third sentence into this was oh yeah this was so was this was the yeah this was this was solely the responsibility of the select oh, board I and they are fully accountable for the outcome Oh, okay. so you fixed it. I've already fixed, okay. I fixed it. Okay. And there was one uh, spelling error somewhere in the end of the uh, original memo. Did you? I think it? I did a spell check, but I think also Tim did. Yeah, but it could still be in there. But budget. if it's a typo, Chris will fix it. <laughs> no. No. <clears throat> Okay. Why don't we have, um, because frankly, if I've looked at something 50 times, I sometimes don't catch it. Why don't I have Chris look at it tomorrow? And Did you find it in the original version? Or Okay, yeah, so it's probably it's not in there. Two computer, versions later. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I always highlight everything. Because yeah. I this was on the computer. Re rewrote the last paragraph. You, so you think okay. it was in the last paragraph? It's not okay. there. All right, then it's not there. Well, Chris, it. check it again tomorrow, but maybe we could send that. I'd like to be able to get that sent out tomorrow. Um, I know people are already anxious about this. Okay, yeah. so what the, so what the situation is, is we don't know, we could get enough from the state to cover our um, initial cash outlays. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're not going to get 15 or 16 million because that's, that's more than the total amount uh, that is out there for us to share. So I, which is what our damages are estimated, but until all the roads are fixed in five, the next five to seven years, we will not have a true accounting to the true amount of damage, okay? Mm -hmm. People need to understand that. There's millions of dollars worth of damage that is not fixed. And it won't be fixed unless we get grants. So we we don't know how much we're gonna get from the state. We're already deficit spending at least $3 million somewhere along those lines. And we have to figure out what we're gonna do with River Road. We told River. We okay. What's that? I just wanted to fix the language on this. So my my sentence where this was solely the responsibility of the select board and we were fully accountable for the outcome should be right after where it says we, it failed. Because right now, if you read this, um, at a special election on Tuesday, the town requested. Yep. A, and we should say Tuesday the date because it's been a week yeah. now. Um, I agree with both of those. The town requested approval for debt excluded borrowing for up to five million to cover the cost of working. A debt excluding borrowing requires approval by the by the special town election, and then it goes into saying this was a our responsibility, but it needs to go down. That sentence just needs to be down where it where yeah. where it failed. Yep. And it so you say that at the at the special special election on December yes whatever date yeah. that was it was the fifth the fifth. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then right after where where the vote failed, where, uh, where with yeah. only ten percent of the yep. voters cast ballots, that's where our Senate should be. Oh, um, that this this was our responsibility. Okay, because I just want that to be clear that the failure was ours, and the failure is the vote not passing. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. We might want to rephrase the sentence slightly then. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it it you, what you're trying to imply right. is that we didn't we didn't 
we didn't get people out. Right. We didn't. We didn't. Right. Uh, that's our fault. fault. Um, it's nobody else's fault. It right. was our fault that it didn't pass because we didn't accept right. the seriousness of it. Um, Why don't you say the failure of the passage of the question was solely the responsibility of the select board? Yes, better? that's perfect. Okay, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, I think basically what we're trying to say is that. You know, we didn't we didn't uh, get the word out that there was a vote. We didn't explain why the vote was necessary, and the result was that no, almost nobody came out to vote. Right. So, and that's not staff's fault. That's our fault. Um. Okay, I'll make those two corrections. Okay. So, the intention of this memo, we need people to understand, not to panic. But is to say, what is obviously 20% of the budget, school budget, is about a million dollars, a little over a million dollars. We're not getting that from the school because they have mandated requirements. But what isn't mandated should be thrown into the pot. When you look at what is required by public safety, what do you have to do? What is absolutely have to? What do we throw in the pot? And, and what we need to do is come up with about $3 million somewhere to cover our costs. And it's probably gonna be more uh, because we'll have our snow and ice budget on there. And then we have to, then we as a select board have to figure out how do we make up that difference in different pots of money. We need to make sure that we have a warrant article on town meeting saying that we're gonna take money out of the stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. That's a two thirds vote. Yep. So we have to plan for that. You know, we do have a million dollars sitting in there, but right. once it's gone, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. Yep. So, you know, people need to know that this is, we got serious issues and what kind of cuts we're looking at between now and June 30th. If we don't if have we money- get it passed, then we don't- We don't have money money-wise. from the right. state. And the other thing is that, you know, need people need to understand it's it it can be lost that this is it's like an insurance policy. If the state doesn't give us money and if we have additional costs that we're not anticipating because River Road actually fails and we have to fix it. We need to be able to address those issues before we get to special town meeting, because if we wait until special town meeting and try to, and then we authorize, you know, um, a different set of things, then we're going to have to go out to a vote for a debt exclusion. We're not going to be able to do this before the end of the, the fiscal year. Uh, and then even if we were able to finish it before the end of the fiscal year, there's a month or two of, of work legally to write all of the applications for the borrowing. So, now you're into July or August and you you basically are in yeah you've missed the deadline and you're in non-compliance the credit rating goes to heck right and so Anything else possible. doing it now gives us the time to go through all the process and also to find out what money we're going to get from the state and how much we might have to take out of stabilization so that we don't have to borrow but it's not like any of us wants to spend money and and raise taxes. It, it, you know, this is and some. I think you're right on the on the money there. It's not that we're looking to borrow five million dollars. It's an authorization. We don't have to borrow at all. We usually wouldn't on a project. You always do that, and then you can rescind a certain amount if we get help from the state. We get help from, you know, we pull some money from capital or from stabilization some other ways, but we need that flexibility and timing because you can't, it's not like a private entity where you can just decide to make a decision and, and do it right then. You need approval, you need legal work, you need bond council work. There's a lot of work by staff that goes into all of it. So it's a, it's timing issues. And that's why you, that's why you hire or elect people that make these decisions for the town because you don't all have time to sit here and get involved with all the finances constantly with the town. There's a lot of work going on with the staff, and that's why you elect an executive board to make those decisions. That's why we need that help to get this done. It, it, it's a lot more moving parts than just, you know, having three million dollars of your money waiting to fix a, a, an issue that comes up. We're never going to do that. Doesn't make any sense. We just need that flexibility and the timing. 
and we will not borrow more than we have to. Yeah. I, I mean, people have been working so hard to try to figure out. I mean, John Bachar has hundreds of hours trying to figure out what we're doing. Kevin, hundreds of hours, what we're trying to do. And, you know, we're just going to every meeting we can to try to hustle money. And it just, you know, it's very hard. So anyway, okay. So to the extent that this is going out, people are going to ask, Mm -hmm. Well, when should the when should I expect to be able to report back on this? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know that it's necessarily the best expectation to try to get people to report back in two weeks, Carolyn, because right. it is the holiday season and it is we are waiting. I'm not, I'm not just saying that though. We are waiting to see what happens on the 16th of January, um, and. I think it was Tim that said to me, this is really, and so did Chris, this is sort of an exercise. We need to see what people can do. Um, and we really need to let, you know, the the folks that handle the budgets most often, like Brenda, myself, um, work, look at maybe some of the places that pop up right away for where we could potentially make cuts. But there is a section of this memo that says hiring is frozen. So we've got a critical ask you've put in front of one of your department heads, and that's the clerk to hold this election. Mm -hmm. She's going to need help. And there's enough, but understand there's enough work for the rest of us that we can't just assume we can redeploy staff. We don't necessarily have the capacity internally to do that. So to the extent that that puts the fear of God into people. I think you all need to think about what that seems like on the other side. I, I really feel like we can't commit to hiring someone when we're going to lay them off uh, if the if the worst case scenario happens. So I, I still feel like there has to be a, fire, a hiring freeze. It's just That's just the reality of it, Casey. There's no money. I understand what's happening, but, uh, and I am agreeing that, um, you know, we can relook at after the 16th. So, but, but we are not hiring anybody between now and January 16th. That's just it. So I think you have to accept that if we have to redeploy staff, we aren't going to be, we may not be able to meet all, all of your expectations. We're not going to, not going to meet so many expectations. That so that's really what's going to happen. Yeah. That, that's I, mean, I need that's all of fun. you to understand that and acknowledge it Fine. because if somebody comes to you and complains and the reaction Fine. is to sort of ask us what's going on and yet we're under the situation where we have to help get something done because voting is a it, it's a constitutionally protected right. It's priority number one. It is priority number one. Casey, Just like getting taxes out where. <laughs> Casey, we don't have a pro we don't have a problem with it, but we just can't spend money. Okay, so so there I, are things that we have to that we have to spend money on. There are things that we have that we have coming up expectations y'all have had about you know what's going to happen in the next month, and so that's really some of the questions I've been fielding is how are we going to handle some of these planned things we've got in front of us? And they have to hold well, why don't you develop a list of the planned things that are most worrying people, and and we'll say okay, this is our priority. Prepare for the special election. Well, that's already your priority. Right, exactly. And then say, Cassie's on top of we, that. we expect these things. Yeah, I mean, without having a list of things that are, are, are people are worrying about, we can't really respond to it. And and there's nothing we can do about it. I, all, this was not really controversial. I don't. I still don't think it's really controversial, but people still have to take the time to vote. No one came to vote. So guess what? This is, we don't have a choice on this. I mean, like I said, we're missing opportunities because we have no flexibility with without that borrowing capacity. So there's nothing to do. I hear what do. you're saying. I'm just bringing up, as, as the town administrator, I feel like I have to make this known because yeah, it- Make it known. Give us a list. Give us a list. Because but you, if you get another complaint from Hawks Road, you can just say, I'm sorry. Did you vote? Because guess what? We're missing- we cannot hire an engineer to complete the application in time for that deadline for Hawks Road. Okay, the deadline is going to be is is in, in January, I think, right? Yes, yeah, so the first week of January. It's done. We're not going to do it. Okay, until next year. I, I don't. Know. Part of me is I don't think you ask them whether they voted or not. 
Just, no, but just let them know that because of the vote. No, we have funding constraints. That's right. the answer. They can vote no. They're more than welcome we to come in and go, tell well, us well, not. Well, no, requires us to hire somebody. But I don't. Like, I don't even mind if they voted no. It's the idea right. that they didn't take five minutes. We don't ask them about that when they no. call, but you just tell them. I am. That's well, not for me, me to ask. So. I can no. forever because they're calling to complain to me. That's fine, but it's you can say something you know. that I can. Yeah, exactly. Yes, staff I'm not Perfect. allowed. To. Yeah, that's fine. So really, but, all I can say to that person is, you know, we don't have the funds to hire an engineer so that we could try to get a grant to fix the road. And it's more than probably a million dollars. So guess what? It's, we don't have the money to fix your road. It's confusing to a lot of people. It is very. They confusing. don't. This is not their full time job. They don't pay attention to it it's they assume the town's going to run the way it's going to run and you know and some some are a little more up on what municipal finance takes and it's it's just complicated it's not an easy thing to answer on facebook it's not even easy to answer in a meeting like this it takes multiple meetings of going through every aspect of the budget funds that you can spend easy funds that you can't funds that are required to be spent on other things so people think, oh, you got all this money for a library, you could just fix the roads. It's not how it works. Democracy decided how that money was going to get spent mm -hmm. and taxation. Uh, we don't have that flexibility. So it's it's way more complicated than, than a couple of sound bites. So, you know, uh, I'm willing to answer anybody's questions, meet with anybody anytime, show them our finances and what we're dealing with and what the requirements are. I'll make myself available to anybody anytime talk about how urgently this this vote is needed. So to the extent that there's some planning needed about how you want to get the word out, what town staff and town resources are limited in certain ways. The An elected official can say anything they want to say. Mm -hmm. We cannot. Right. So if we're going to send out pamphlets or do any kind of messaging, we have to be very clear about it. So my question for you is, and I know this has sort of come up in other conversations, um, how do you want to approach that? I, I just want, I want staff to put it on the town. Like when I go on town there, it says automatically we're not plowing sidewalks. I want it to say automatically there's a vote on the 16th for this question. Initially, right away, boom, I want to sign on the town common. I want to sign at the transfer station. I want everybody to know there's a vote. I don't care how you vote. I just want you to vote. And so to the point about messaging is people are asking questions like, how is this going to affect my tax bill? Mm -hmm. um, they need to know perhaps sure. the difference between a yep. debt exclusion. Right. Um, and so to the, to the extent that we can assist providing information, that's one thing. But we really don't have any set in right. the connection of what a vote means right okay exactly we have to be very clear if it's pr being produced on our using yeah. town money that it's very clear that it's very that it's objective. vanilla it's just that there's a vote and we ask there is a vote. vote now my other question is is did you want to hold an information session yes this came yes. up briefly we yes. we already talked about that yes, yes. absolutely yeah so we need to think about what that looks like in terms of when to do it and should, and my thought, and you know, I'm welcome to you guys talking this through with us. Um, it may be we hold a separate information session to really get people's attention mm -hmm. after the holidays. Um, yeah, the week before the-, the I was thinking like January 8th, there's nothing on my calendar. It's a Monday night. I don't know if that's a good night for everyone, but- um, this 350th is our yep. well, well, they can take a break. They can it's take a break. It's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. January, January 2024 is no longer 350th. All right. I'm just All saying. Right. <laughs> so January 8th is a planning board meeting. Sorry. Okay. I was okay. afraid so that was Tuesday the night? It, maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, work it out. What, yeah. Anytime about a week So before, what we're yeah. trying to get at is when do you want us to start scheduling that? Because that's something Chris and I will work. I, I think we should do it January 9th because that's a week before... It's a week but, before. Yeah. Okay. And 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 it doesn't have to be complicated, mm -hmm. but I think what people do is they forget how many roads. Now I asked Chris to give me the latest printout on um our roads so that um I could reference it if we were talking about Ke to Kevin. And so I think we should just list the roads that were impacted the work that we did on July 10th. Uh, we we didn't have any um, storm damage on the 16th that I believe, but.
but you might want to check with Kevin to verify that mm -hmm. risk. We didn't put any in for MEMA anyway. Right. And then um, and then July tw 21st. So what we have to do is we had over a million dollars. It was a million seven, I think, July 10th. And we had about 15 to 18 million on July 21st. Okay. We have actually only spent of those millions, we've only spent 3 million ish to open the roads or get ready for winter. So what we have to do is, is just go over the roads, which road we have spent the money on, not list. We don't have to say we listing money, but what was the damage for each road? Mm -hmm. And what's left to do? People don't understand that there's still road. I mean, on this list, we have spent almost $60,000 on River Road. But River Road is on the verge of collapse. So <clears throat> what we have to do is, is show people that we have, we have to button it up for the winter somehow. We have to have that expense one way or the other. Um, and we may, by... January 9th, have more of an idea of of going forward a little bit, you know, but I just want to list the roads and what damage has not been done. You mean not been fixed? Not been fixed, right. Not what we have left. So people understand that we still have money outstanding. Whether we want to address it or not, River Road is going to be sucking up our money. Mm-hmm. And then you, you know, you got Hawks Road. You got, speaking of which, um, Chris, I just wanted, I had written a note down and I just wanted to follow up. Did we put in a capital improvement request for the roads? I had, we had talked about putting it in. I don't believe so, but that can definitely happen. Um, and the reason why, like Little Meadow Road is a $200,000 match, give or take. It's at least a million dollar project, so and it's a twenty. It's a twenty twenty percent match. That kind of thing. Um, cool. Hawks Road is engineering. We just you, if you call me, we can go over it. But Hawks Road, uh, I think, needs at least a fifty thousand dollar commitment of engineering to move forward on a million dollar fix. Okay. So we I mean, had one before special town meeting. What we could do is refresh it and you can fill in the blanks that we didn't have at the time. Okay. River Road, we still haven't gotten an engineering request, but I would at least say that's 100,000. So just put together what's left, what ones we haven't fixed so that people can understand what we got outstanding. Okay. Is it, does that make sense to you, Trevor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because people think that this that we're all done at three million. That's not, and we're not anywhere close. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of outstanding issues for this year. Yeah, I mean, the 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 really the only to my mind the the justification for asking for the extra two million dollars that we haven't already spent is that if River Road fails, we will have the authority to go out and fix it. Um. If the if it river road fails, and we don't have the authorization to take care of it, then we're going to be staring at just closing the road down. Yeah, yeah it's done. <laughs> and it's tough to work in the winter on on this kind of infrastructure issue anyway. But obviously, you know, we'd have to do it. Uh, you know, or, it or close up, it. It messes up the plowing routes. Messes up bus routes. Yep. People getting to work. Sure. I mean, it's really everything is so serious. It is. But anyway, you do it without money. Yeah. All right. Um, and the other thing that we need to convey to people is, look, if the if the state miraculously gives us three million dollars and we don't have a debt, um, then the authority to borrow five million dollars will not be enforced. There will be zero impact mm -hmm. if the state gives us less than the, what we've already spent then we will need to borrow or try to find a way in the next budget or in this budget mm -hmm. to close the gap. Right. And if we're in a position to not borrow money, we're not going to borrow money. Right. Okay. I think we've said enough. I know I, although every time I think we say enough, then 
Yeah. Well, we'll have more time. And again, yeah. we're, we're always open. Contact us anytime. Happy to sit down and have one-on-ones with anybody that has any any questions at all about what we do and how we do it. I don't have all the answers, but I'll get them if I don't have them. And we're constantly working on trying to match the road to the grants programs, um, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, budgets and annual town meeting articles for consideration. So I just wanted to give you an update. Um, it'll be in my report when you see it. Um, so finance, uh, the finance committee is planning on holding meetings on Mondays at five o'clock. Um, I think when there's a conflict with times, they'll stop early. Mm -hmm. um, but I want you guys to have that in your head because Brenda and I would still like you to, to meet with them on a regular basis to go over the budget so that you have a more inclusive conversation. Yep. Um, Mark Brennan and I, I have something I have to deal with first and I'm going to reach out to him, but Mark Brennan and I are going to sit down and talk about capital. Okay. Um, but what I wanted you to think about, especially in January, is really drilling down to the absolute essentials of what needs to be on town meeting floor in terms of articles. Right. Um, you know, budget's one thing, but we always go through the articles and I think people people don't realize that there's often a lot of background that goes into vetting these articles. So I think it would be worthwhile to move the time frame up to get so that people understand we expect to see these articles in a certain period yep. because it can take yeah. us weeks to get a portion of what that article means done. Right. Um, generally, I think the bylaw requires that the warrant be closed not less than a month prior to town meeting. We may want to actually give ourselves a little more wiggle room on that. So I want you guys to think about that because I know you're going to get questions from people who call you, especially after I've said this. Um, I'm just trying to make it a smoother process so that we get that part of the town meeting warrant done early mm -hmm. um, or as early as we can, because it does inform the public that, and it means we don't maybe put as much detail in well, we it if we any, post it early. We're not seeing any major zoning stuff coming from the planning board. I don't and, know. And we've seen quite, I don't and they've know. done a lot over the last five years. I think they probably had a, I mean, I, I, and there's I haven't no heard of anything that we can like, make changes. Sure. But I mean, we always find things we after we see something. We don't about need a time. massive, you know, 20. I do have a budget. I do have a shit. bylaw change that I'm going to put in front of you. And it relates to personnel, mm -hmm. the personnel bylaw. Right. Um, well, we've been trying for that. I have year. a, I have a grant and I have a group working on helping us come up with a manual so that we can strip out some of the personnel bylaw to really meet with, you know, allow us the flexibility to make decisions yep. in a better manner based on new information that doesn't, it isn't included in the bylaw. Okay. So that's one bylaw. It's a general bylaw. Um, All right. But this is what I mean. If we send a warning out to everybody and ask them to be ready sooner, then we have a chance to take a lot more into consideration. And you guys have the ability to think about how you want that warrant to flow and maybe take some time to work through yeah. um, whatever the draft of that is earlier so that Dan can have some conversations with you about it. Okay. Because remember, earlier this year, we talked about changing when we were having town meeting and the election. And that's, and that's kinda... still something that we can think about because I'll tell you, um, if you only have, if you still only have a few weeks to look at a school budget, that may feel like too little time for everybody to take a good hard look at our finances, because that's usually the last budget that comes in is are the school budget. Sorry, I shouldn't say one. Um, so I'm just thinking these are the things that are sort of out there that I'm regurgitating from what I recall of this early earlier this year. So I just want you to be aware of some of what you'll see. You may see come from me in terms of uh, memos. Okay. All right. Yep. I, I, I do think we have to look at the stabilization article to remove money from the stabilization. I, I, I don't think we're going to be able to. And speaking to of stabilization, it. guess what we don't have to put in stabilization? Opioid bonds. We don't have. We don't have to put it in stabilization. Um, It was part of the supplemental budget, the language in the oh, supplement. Okay. I sent you guys some information what, about it. Did we get any money there? We did. Oh. We have over 36,000. Um, we have we it finally got the, the general fund right now? Hmm? It's in the general fund right now? No, it's actually, well, 
I thought we put it. it you need to appropriate it, but we don't have to. Or if we have this fix, which is what was just voted, and and both Brenda and I can digest it. But if the fix is available, we don't have to appropriate. We can put it into a special fund for the purpose of X. Okay. okay. And that's really what the good news was. It's just the mechanics of it. She and I both have to read it. All right. All right. Well, that's wonderful news because um, because of the new mayor in Greenfield and because the new they will have a new health director. Uh, you know, any joint effort with our PHE group is probably you know we're, it's on hold for them right now. Okay. So Rick I would Brand? like to have the funding be on hold for right now. Okay. You've got a lot in front of you. Rick. Rick Brand? Um, the brick grant is um, Chris and uh, did the memo. Is the memo here, Chris? The one from us supporting the submission. That's what we have to vote on. So I didn't include that in the packet because I know that got worked into the document that was produced by the engineer. Um, but if you'd like, I can go print up the memo that okay. I addressed. Well, we just we need to support. We can talk about if Trevor and Tim have any questions. Um, we, this is, this is for the Pine Nook from the train trestles to the top of the hill. Yeah. And, um, Eagle Brook, uh, we told Eagle Brook, we don't have any money. And so they stepped up to be the match for this is, and they're, they're going to send a letter in the submission saying that they will provide the match, which is a requirement. You have to say where the 25% match is coming from. And. Chris, I think you better print it out since that probably uh, is important for Tim and. Sure, I'll go take care of that. Yeah, let's let's move on. We'll do something else and come back to that. Um, updated language for the approval of House thirty eight forty three, an act authorizing the town of Deerfield to continue the employment of our police department members. Um, Casey, I thought we I thought this was already approved. So. What you guys had gone through the approval on our end, but they changed language on the floor. So you every time there's a language change from the legislature, you guys have to look at it and approve it. So, so the last the you had one before that was that was a different bill. Um, and if they had a change, I could be wrong. If they had a change, really, Chris has been following this closer than I have because I've had other issues I've been dealing with. Um, if they do make a small change, they still want you to look at it. So really, uh, this just says, notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, Michael W. Hable, Robert A. Thrasher, and Mark Jocks, uh, members of the police department uh, for the town of Deerfield, um, may continue serving their positions until they reach 70 years of age, the date uh, of their retirement or non-reappointment, whichever occurs first. No further deduction shall be made from the regular compensation um, of the three pursuant to chapter 32 of the general law sub subsequent to their uh, reaching the age of 65 in connection with their service to the town for retirement or pension purposes. So that just means after 65, they take no more money and put it into their pension. Is that right? Is that the change? I think that's what I understand. I don't okay. know if that's a change. That's the highlighted area. Yeah, that's the change that the, the, okay. That the uh, legislature wanted, okay. and and they misspelled Thrasher's name, so that's been fixed. Oh, okay, great. I'm All good right. then. Did you make the motion, Trev? I'll make a motion to approve the the uh, revised language um, from the house. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion on that? All right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank okay, you. Chris is doing the. So he's printing you the what letters you asked for. I think. So he and I were both working on this, uh, the agenda, I mean. So we might have cross purposes in this. No, that's all right, because that's the same. Uh, it's just, the same. I, I want Tim and uh, Trevor to read it to okay. make sure they approve it before we vote on it, because uh, it is necessary to vote because yeah. we are the sponsor. Okay. You want to look at the annual permits? permits? Yeah. Yes. Let's look at the read annual. Them? Yes. Uh, I would say one thing before you start, Trevor. If you guys could sign at least the liquor licenses, um, so there's original signatures. We'll sign them. Um, gonna, that would be great. Some of these other permits. We're going to go through them and sign them all. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it right now today. So um, 2024 liquor license annual renewals, all alcohol on premise. Um, Lori uh, A. McDonald for Deerfield Inn, 
uh, Gianni Calabrese for Gianni Figs Restaurant K LLC, uh, Betsy Shea for Hotel Warren Inc., Jennifer Howard Food for Strength DBA Leo's Table, George Miller for Magic Wings Inc., Michael McManus for um, uh, PHB Yankee LLC DBA Powder Hollow Brewery, Robert uh, Patrizzi for the Tavern Sports Bar LLC, uh, Gon Hao Chen the Walk Three. Uh, William D. Wolfram for Wolfie's Restaurant. And that would be that list. So I'll make a motion to approve those. Second. Is there any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All Alcohol On-Premise Club. Uh, Stephen Feidenkevitz for the Polish Citizens, uh, Polish American Citizens Club. And I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. All those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All alcohol off-premises. Stephen Schechterly for the Deerfield Spirit Shop and Melissa Winters for Purple Metal Ventures DBA Deerfield River Liquors. Make a motion to approve that. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. This is wine and malt off-premise. Uh, Nicole M. Ch uh, Cheslick for Cheslick's Market, LLC. I'm Melissa Dunn for Circle K, Massachusetts, Thank DBA you. Circle K. Uh, Rakesh uh, Parikh, uh, Deerfield Convenience Store. And Sawat Wally, okay. Kapoor uh, Mobile Mart, Inc., DBA Conway Road Neighbors. Make a motion to approve those. Um, oh, uh, Tim, can you second. second that? I have a question. Um, we have had um, some... The chief had no issues with anybody? I you... don't think so. He usually lets us know. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, none that we know, were aware of. in the past with one of them. So. Yep. No, okay. Then I'm all set. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, Farmer Brewer Pouring Permit on-premises. Uh, Gary Bogoff uh, for Berkshire Brewing Company. Damian Lee Goudreau for Treehouse Brewing Company. Farmer Distillery Pouring Permit. Um, Damien Goodrew, uh, Lee Goodrow for Treehouse Brewing Company Farmer Series Pouring Permit, and Damien Lee Goodrew for Treehouse Brewing Company Farmer Winery Pouring Permit. Make a motion to approve all, all those. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. 2024 Select Board Annual Renewals for Common Victualler. Um, Gary uh, Bogoff, uh, Berkshire Brewing Company. Lori Ann McDonald, Deerfield Inn, Jennifer Howard, Food for Strength, Leo's Table, Gianni uh, Calabrese, Gianni Figs Restaurant, LLC, George Miller, Magic Wings, Inc., uh, Gon Hao Chen, uh, The Walk, uh, Damian Lee Goudreau, Treehouse Brewing Company, Bill Wolf from Wolfie's Restaurant. I'll make a motion to approve all those. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, I just... Uh, this reminds me of did we ever verify that we did the brunch bylaws? I think remember we discussed this like we just oh, you're right. We to discuss this last year. I don't think we accepted the section. We have to vote to accept that. I think the town meeting has to vote vote to accept the section, and I okay. can't remember what section it is. So then, what that is, we need to make sure it's on town meeting. On town meeting, okay. Because I'm starting um, to write a, myself a list of articles. Yes. So thank you. Class, uh, class two dealers, uh, Richard uh, uh, Badoga, Richards Automotive, Greg Gardner, GMG Enterprise, Enterprises, uh, Kevin uh, Borbo, K Dog Auto Sales. Gary and Scott Kolakowski, Deerfield Motors and Equipment, um, Jeffrey uh, Caustic, Country Roads, and that would be it. I'd make a motion to approve all of those. Um, I, I just wanted to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll second it, and then I want to ask Thank a you. question. Um, it occurred to me that, and I, and I don't have any you know, concern here, but there's um, the RV, RV uh, company. Is not on this list this yeah. year. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the, what I was asking about is I, I understood at one of the meetings that there was a limitation put on how many units could be on the property at any one time. Correct. And it looks like there's a lot there. Okay. So I just wondered if that's something that's through purview of the building inspector. Or it is. Who, because yeah. it's something that, you know, 
needs to be addressed. Okay. Yep. And why is he on this list? Uh, he probably is not prepared to have insurance we, or we, not uh, ready yet. We're working on that right now. Yep. Okay. Okay. So all, those okay. all those in favor? Tim LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. So class three dealers, uh, I just have one, uh, James uh, Byrne Jr. for Deerfield, East Deerfield Auto Wrecking. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Carolyn Daniel, Ness. I. Oh, and Carolyn Ness. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, just one question. Um, under a few new directors, we have Harold Risley and Lawrence. Now, I know Lawrence just passed recently, and we're so sorry to hear that. He was such an instrumental part of this town. Wonderful man. Um, I know. Last stop for many. And uh, Unfortunately. Uh, yes. And uh, so I just didn't know if we should be approved. I mean, obviously, if he's passed, so I, he wouldn't be getting a license. So, uh, but Harold is on here and that Harold covers this. Yeah. So I don't, unless somebody else is working under Lawrence's, but I wouldn't think so. I know Northampton's been helping out a little North, bit. I, I don't know what the what the structure right. of that is. So, so there's a nuance there that we were trying to be um, mindful of sure. the fact that sure. this is a recent loss. Right. Um, so I just didn't know. I mean, I'm happy to to approve it, but I don't know if it, it's worth Why it. Why don't you let us, if you guys do approve it, we can hold it. And okay, that's fine. That's fine. So I'll make a motion to approve Harold Risley, Risley's Funeral Home, and Lawrence Risley, Risley's Funeral Home for uh, funeral directors. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, and then you could just adjust how you need to. Yeah, just hold on to it so it gets, it's sorted out correctly, because if it goes in wrong, it'll be, yeah. Oh. So want to make a lot of for them. Lot of extra work. Yep. Um, home business renewal. This is uh, uh, Lisa Berger for Deerfield Healing Arts. Uh, Richard Floyd by the book. Uh, Elaine Mont Deerfield Therapeutic Massage and Robin Lafleur for Salon sixty eight. Make a motion to approve those. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Tim Hill, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And uh, let's see, yearly uh, entertainment yearly. This is Betsy Shea for Hotel Warren, Robert uh, Patrizzi for the Deerfield, uh, the the town's uh, the Tavern Sports Bar LLC, uh, plus one jukebox oh, and two pool tables. Um, Damien uh, Goudreau, Treehouse Brewing Company, Ben Ware for the Yankee Candle Company. Make a motion to approve those permits. And I'll second it with the one observation. Yeah. Um, in some places we re refer to Damien Lee Goudreau and some right. we repair Damien Goudreau. So yep. we just want to be consistent. Sure. It uh, does depend I'll... on the application. Yeah. And I don't have that in front of me. So if it, if it was different in the, in each application, that might be the inconsistency. Yep. Either. Just mentioning it, not, not, yep. not assigning any. <laughs> I don't, I'd like to, I have to go back and look. Thank you. All those in favor? And LGI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. All those in favor? You just got to say your name. You got to say oh, your name. Oh, God. Carolyn. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, you're, Sorry. I'm almost done here. Annual yeah, resident no, uh, auctioneer, uh, Douglas Pilladu for Douglas Auctioneers, LLC. Second. Um. All those in favor? And LGI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. I aye. Just, I just have a question. Um. This probably silly, but you have a resident auctioneer and then you have annual non-resident. Yeah. And then how can they both be for a hundred bucks? It shouldn't, shouldn't we have at least a difference, a little additional charge for a non-resident? I don't know. I mean, I a non-resident like... sometimes has to rent space to hold their auctions. So it's definitely a question. Maybe you guys should think about for next year. Um. Well, no, maybe we should consider over the next year making changes to the right. The fees because but, I don't know already how paid, correct. So I know today I wouldn't necessarily do right. it, but that's definitely no, not the application has already been filled yeah. out. But the, to me, that doesn't seem to be fair. So okay. I would, um, I mean, no one's paying property tax, even if they pay rent, they're not paying property taxes. So, um, I think there should be a, a differential in the charge. That's all. This and is my personal opinion. Annual non resident auctioneer Michael, uh, with Drewitz Jr., Catamount Auction Company, LLC, and Paul Muller-Reed for New, uh, New England Auctioneer. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Camille G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Thank you very much. That list yeah. is complete. So 
Um, who's, who's signing what? We don't have to sign these because okay. yeah. these, these yeah. can be used with our stamp. All right. So what do we have to say? Trevor's signing that, pack, yeah. that uh -huh. packet. Yep. Okay, so we're back to the brick grant. Um, I read the memo and I don't have any objection. Okay. Um, the only thing that I would like to see is develop consistency on, and this is my editor side, when it's July 23, it's July 23. I just, I, thirds and the THs and stuff and STs, I just think look odd in written text, but that's me. And nobody else may have an objection. So that's why I say I don't really. <clears throat> well, um, I would like to thank Chris for putting this memo together so Absolutely. that it was ready for um, the meeting with MEMA. Um, Amima reviewed this and were, was very happy to support it. So what the vote is tonight is to move forward with the BRIC grant and accept Eagle Brook's pledge to pay the match. And we're hoping for the entire amount. And Chris, did we have come up with the entire amount? It's, it's over $3 million. I think that's what was included in the memo from the engineer. Um, but I'm not sure which page it was on. Yeah. Well, there was different versions and we had to get uh, the BCA, the um, cost benefit analysis to work out correctly. So we were competitive. And um, I think we took the middle value, which was 3 million something. But if you see a number, Tim, no. Oh, project costs is four million four hundred and twenty thousand, but the actual grant, because the Eagle Book would be paying twenty five percent of this, um, the actual grant will be three million something. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I would make a motion to support the submission of the um, brick grant to the MEMA Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency to forward on to FEMA for a national competition for a hazardous mitigation grant. Second that. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay, do you, you don't have any questions, Trevor? Okay. No, I'm uh, just, you know, this, this is all the background work that Carol is doing, that our staff is doing to try and get our roads repaired. And it, it you know, we, we go after certain roads in certain timing to cover try to get maximum grant money to fix this stuff so there's reasons why one road is done before another reasons why we put a lot of effort into one grant versus another and this is part of that it. it's a lot of work that went into this and I thank you for doing that and Don't if this is six, this application successful um then you know, $4 million worth of road and infrastructure repair will occur without any impact on the tax rate. Yep. And and honestly, that's normally how, how we've dealt with it in the past. And it's in this three to five year period after the actual loss. It's just that there was so much loss this time yeah. that it's overwhelming. And we have no wiggle room with hiring engineering firms and all kinds of stuff. It's just Pardon me. In the fourth hour, I did yawn. Yes, I know. <laughs> You've heard okay. it. I'm going to start. It's going to be the new mosquito. You yawned. New, new mosquito word. We're going to be talking about roads. I know roads. roads. No more. No roads. Okay. After after January 16th. Mad okay. Max. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't see any appointments, Casey. Okay. Placeholder for. Anything? So oh, we recycle. do have a 20, the 2024 buy recycle policy for your yes. review and approval. Yes. Did we, there was something here that says brick grant submission for review and approval. Did, that's, that that's, was what you that, were talking that's about. That's what we voted on. So, we, so the memo and yep. everything's all, okay. Yeah. So as far as I know. Um, that's what also, you guys have to do. Yeah, we're all set. Voted. So now this is a recycle policy. We have to have a, a recycle policy, right? Yep. And we have to send it out to employees. Um, to encourage them. We also post it in various areas. And that's a requirement of being in the... It's part of the... Uh, I want to say MRF, but I could be wrong. I just know it's part of our uh, recycling requirements for various grants and, 
and that's usually run through Kevin and Jan. Okay. And Kevin can mentally slap me if you want. Um, ah. I feel like that Seinfeld episode where Kramer is signing all those checks for one cent each. <laughs> Last from the past, yeah. Trevor. <laughs> um, Can you do his so head, generous his head motion? <laughs> I don't know how he does it, but <laughs> your turn. Oh, okay. Now, was Chris? Was there a place on the brick grant that we were supposed to? Did I miss for signing? I don't believe there was. I looked okay. at it and I, I didn't see any signatures necessary. All right. How, how do they know that we voted this? Do you just attach a memo to it? I'm happy to, yeah. The minute I, I would she could, that. Yeah, he could just write. Yeah. You know, I can even. meeting of X, the board voted. I, I'm just worried it will come to get kicked back. I can even get it attested by the town clerk. I know that often happens with votes. Oh, um, you know what? That would actually be perfect. And, because, yeah, um, I was going to suggest an annotation. The, yeah. I know that engineers want to submit it by Friday. Mm -hmm. It's not due till Monday, but sure. um, it would be really helpful. And okay. that actually leads into another question. I'm not sure if this was covered when I was uh, in my office, but the discussion on House Bill 3843. Okay. Perfect. Um, I can share. Okay. There's a bunch of DEP. So all those documents are copies. There's a, there's... We have to have several versions of this document available in various places. So is this my signature? It looks yes. like there's only you one. You need to sign them as the chair. Okay. Transfer station. Yes, right. it's for okay. transfer station. It's after the um, yeah. inspection. Inspection. So there's some corrective action that has to be taken, and then we need various copies for various files and also to post. Okay. So I and Kevin, these turn are all the camera on if you want more information. Yeah. Okay. I will sign these then uh, <clears throat> separately. The, the so, two conditions that were required on those or, or the recommendations is that we have to put the uh, you know, the methane sensor inside the shed. <clears throat> uh, that's already coming in from um, Franklin County Solid Waste along with the sign that it says a new band sign that needs to be up. And once again, actually, I already got the invoice for it. Um, so we should be seeing that uh, very shortly. So long story short is I would feel comfortable signing that. Okay. Go. So I will take a motion for the 2024 by recycle policy. Motion to approve the, the uh, by recycle policy for 2024. And, and um, all those in favor? MLTI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, Thank you. And I'll sign these. And I had something to go over whenever we have a second because I wanted yeah, to talk think, about um, it's in the mail list, but I just wanted to kind of hit on it. Okay, so why don't we address the mail then? Go ahead, Trevor. Um well there's the well, I'll just hit these real quick because in a line, but uh they put in the mail the Upper Pioneer Valley District's uh meeting. They have a meeting coming up on January 9th. I don't think we yet have a um Permanent. A permanent person yeah. sitting in on those meetings. So we really need to do that. Um, somebody, anybody? A where, do they, where do they go? Where, uh, where do they take place? They meet in Greenfield. Um, and then... Uh, like the Olver Center or something? Yeah, it's, it's the Upper Piney Valley District. It's no, right on Main off Street. Off I want to... on Main Street. Yeah, it's right oh. on Main Street. And you turn right away. It's right in the front there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they, they have minutes uh, to approve from October. They have some um, other... You know, other business, old business, new business, and stuff coming up. So, anybody that would like to serve on that um, that district would be greatly appreciated. Um, but they have their budget here, and all the things that they they're working on are, are listed here. Um, the one thing I wanted to get to was that um, uh, a contract with DPC. So we've been talking with um, with uh, so DEP has been in touch with um, our plant, Eric Meals, and with. Um, uh Dave Prickett, our engineer. And they're uh, you know, every every year they do evaluations of um of our plant. And the couple of things that were on the issues this year, what and I mentioned this at a meeting recently, but it was for um one, because our plant is is large enough that it could be um a 
you know, rated for a different size, but um, they have kind of talked back about that. So it's, uh, I'll just read this real quick. It says, as requested, DPC reached out uh, to Jay Pimper on behalf of the town regarding Berkshire Brewery Company and the SI SIU process. Based on our initial call with Jay, he did not believe that BBC rose to the level of the town needing a formal industrial pre-treatment program where BBC would have to pre-treat on their property before it hits our sewer system, but did recommend that the town establish and are requiring the town to establish an industrial permit, user permit with BBC. And I think this has probably been in place before, and especially when Kane's Pickle was here, they were probably also had yeah, a they had one. A, an industrial user permit. Um, so uh, DPC put together a scope of work for this project, which is, um, you know, it is uh, coordinating all aspects of the proposed pot project with the U.S. EPA and Mass DEP staff um, received from the town the most recent three years of uh, South Deerfield flows and contaminant loading. So really 60 percent of our load that comes into that plant, BOD, which is like um, all the, you know, the um, <clears throat> all, all the stuff that kind of comes in that the uh, natural stuff that comes out of their brewing process hits that plant and that's when you get all that foam on the top and we dealt with that for a ton when you know the last director was here this director's been a little bit better about um, managing that and of course we have a whole lot more capacity now that the plant is being upgraded but we do need to um, we do need to assess a permit for that um, charge accordingly because we're not charging the right amount for the amount of work that we need to do to that that inflow. Um, so it requires putting, you know, putting the, we did this a couple of years ago when we were having this issue. We we opened up the manholes out here and put in some um, some sensors and it was, uh, you know, it's off the chart. If you look in there, it's just completely loaded with, uh, with hops. Um, so so really the, the idea is, um, so the received the last three years of, of data flow and contaminant loading and information on daily operations, process control data in electronic format, compatible with Microsoft, perform statistical analysis to identify influent flow and load characteristics, including biochemical oxygen demand, which is the BOD, um, the TSS, which is the total suspended solids, nitrogen and phosphorus species, um, and other contaminants that may be required, as well as peak, peaking factors to uh, to be used for the basis for the current and future flows and loads. Um, no costs associated with the additional testing that may be required are included in our proposal. So we may have more testing that may need to happen, but um, develop a draft um, IUP uh, between the town and BBC, including limits to flows, loads, pretreatment standards if needed, monitoring requirements and fees as well as compliance schedule uh, and then coordinate and attend the meetings and then um, update the IUP from task three based on the results of four. You know, it's coordinating all of that stuff and reporting back to DEP and uh, Mass DEP and US EPA. So, um, so it was our, you know, this was, uh, again, a, a letter back to DEP was our understanding the select board plans to review this proposal at its meeting on 12 13. Therefore, we cannot provide the DEP with a finite timeline on the proposed work until after this meeting. Uh, they copied me and, and I sent this to Casey as well, um, but they're gonna update um, Jay from, from e, uh, EPA as soon as we get this stuff figured out and approve the contract. So we ha if we don't approve it tonight's meeting, we should move forward. I know it's not on the agenda. I don't know if you wanna talk about it. I, and there should be, oh, you have it here, great. I was trying to remember the amount for, it was eleven thousand eight forty. So we can talk with Brenda and make sure that this meets. You know, we have it in our budget from the that that's from the sewer treatment plant. Right? Yes, oh, exactly. Oh, you do. That's a enterprise fund, that's right? Separate. Yeah, funding so, mechanism. So I would support that, Trevor. If you're you're making the motion, I would make the motion to approve this and get moving on it, so we can yeah. be done and then figure out. And, and they will help us with a with a uh, fee schedule for that for the industrial user permit. Casey? We have got to put this into the regulations. And you exactly. and I have talked about that several times. Yep. We need numbers from DPC yep. to finish those regs. We have, we, yeah, we have a per, we have a contract for that, I believe. I thought it was ready to go, no? 
<laughs> I think I t I tried to talk to Dave about this. Okay. Um, I but either way, we've yeah. got to get it done. And so this is a good opportunity absolutely. to sort of say, if industrial right. permitting is required, yep. let's incorporate it. Absolutely. Because I You're don't so remember right. if that was in the draft that we sent earlier this year. It might not have been. Yeah. yeah. So it probably yeah. needs to be added. Okay. So, okay. So I made a motion. And I second it. Okay. All those in favor? Tim LGI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn SI. I agree that we need to move on it. Great. Uh, uh, we, we cannot do anything. I mean, I just can't say you enough. We can't do anything that would keep us, get us above the radar right. on, this, on this new regulation stuff, okay? And, uh, I'll make a motion for the chair to sign the contract. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S, aye. Okay. Um, we really have to pay attention. So is that all the mail? Uh, there Maybe. was one more item in here, and I think it was, oh, Mass DET layout. Uh, all right. And that must be the um, layout must be for the, um, is that for the uh, culverts? Um, no, you know what? I think that has to do with um, 5 and 10. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, right, right by um, Bittersweet. Oh, okay. And Richardson's. This is what they're. Yeah, this looks like all that work for the uh, culvert. They have they're to no do, right? notify us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what the meeting was about today. Yeah. And um, they agreed Wait, that actually, they're gonna. Is... I think this one is actually no, in is South different. Deerfield. Yeah, it's uh, down street. Different. This is. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what the project is, but it's from my understanding, and Kevin might be more familiar with this because I know he was having a conversation about it over email, but. Um, Elm it's Street. about a thousand feet south of the intersection at Cumberland Farms with Elm Street and Five and Kevin, Ten. Kevin, what is Correct. This? It, it's a curb cut? Is what it is for the house. For a house? Yeah, remember the house that was gonna there that was part of they were gonna try and sell pot there, grow pot there, or whatever. And oh, then they could the red one, hmm. right? They're so they right. So cut. so there so there's a, a common driveway between there and the new yeah. Cheech and Chong place, right? Or there's probably something. Maybe they want their own driveway. Yeah. Uh, but either way, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they were authorized a curb cut, and that's what wow. that is. That's okay, taken so like that's, okay, 10 that's, years. <laughs> so yeah, we exactly. haven't seen anything right. in writing from that meeting. Oh, like God, no, 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 not at all. No. Okay. And and just a real quickie, just so there's no question, that culvert right there at 5 and 10, you know, obviously they're going to be doing what they need to do, put it into their programs, their plans. But the long and the short is what we were told, three to five years. Oh so, no, I know, we know. Um, just that way there's no no disillusion. But yeah, no, you won't you won't see an outcome to that for, for a while. It was, again, basically it was, it was a fact finding for Mass DOT um to see exactly what we got, what they've got. Um the main engineer that came out, Matt, um, he just wanted to see where the water is coming from, where it's going to, because he's not familiar with the area, putting eyes on the situation makes all the difference in the world. And that's basically what he did. And he feels much more comfortable and he'll end up moving forward, make his reports, all that goes to Boston, red tape gets lost three to five years later, we should be good. Um, yeah, no, I know, Kevin, but Matt was at the meeting on Monday. Um, and, and that's what, or yeah, Monday. And that's why it was so exciting um, because he 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 wasn't committed to this at all until we had that meeting. So, um, you know, with Joe Comerford and Nellie Blay and Undersecretary and everything. So, I I'm really excited. Thank you for doing that touring about today. Are you about well, toured out for your life? I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, are you about toured out for your life? I know I'm. Yeah, no, no, it's not quite so bad. One, uh, one last thing I wanted to hit on was, um, and I posted this on line a little bit, but Kevin was kind enough to notify me of um, a, a big blockage on Sugarloaf Street because wipes are still going into the system. They blocked up uh, a huge section and thank who needs it. The Lord, there was a man in his basement or or a resident in their basement, and they noticed back up in their slop sink uh, before it wound up. 
all over the floor or in somebody else's basement. We could have had a massive, massive cleanup. So um, the, this is cooking grease um, and, and wipes. They cannot go into the system. If you can find any other way to dispose of them in the trash, they can't go down the toilet because they wind up getting plugged up and then all your neighbors get sewage in their basements. Um, and it's just a horrendous thing to have happen any time of the year. Um, but please, you know, we, we've been doing pretty good, you know, although you never know what's in the ground until it stops up. But please, whatever you can do. Uh, this one was on Sugarloaf. We've struggled on Captain Lathrop before, I've, although I haven't heard about a backup there yet for a little while. It's been a been a while, Kevin. I don't know what you're Well, we, we've the actual backup itself um, has been solved since we went ahead and replaced the pumps with the bigger pumps. They're able to chew up more. Basically, we're told they can um chew just about anything but you know again you know when it when it comes to the wipes you know a lot of people think oh well once it gets chewed up it's okay yeah well it doesn't what happens it just turns into a big ball um yeah. and, and it's horrible and that and that's what it was so you know unfortunately you know you're, you're looking at about the uh um personal hours um that all came in on overtime um yeah. and then the vector truck so by the time you're through with the both of them you're talking just shy of two grand Right. Um, because somebody wants to, the only thing that should be going in the toilet is what comes out of your body and toilet paper. And that's it. Period. Right. End of story. No um, anything else should not be going in no, there. Everything else is solid not. waste. Everything else is considered not. a solid waste. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I so mean, because realistically what, what we end up having to do because of people are doing that, that's where that mechanical bar screen comes into play. Yeah. So down to plant. So it picks up all this garbage that people are putting down there because that's what they're acting is. It's 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 a it's a liquid garbage disposal for them. Yep. Um, but it goes down there, it picks it out, it rinses it, it squeezes it, and it puts it into a trash can. So if we just put it in the trash can in the beginning, we yeah. can save all that effort on the other side. Yes. Um, and the only other thing, just a quick thought, is uh, maybe thinking about when you're thinking about your regulations, whether you want to maybe from now forward <laughs> and or anytime there, there's been repairs or whatever, um, start requiring people to put their own grinders in right there at their house. Because if they're flushing that stuff, it's going to plug them. It's not going to plug anybody else. And it's right. going to make our collection system extremely healthy. Right. So just a thought. Um, you How know, the, the, to put in the, 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 the units, the units installed are anywhere between... 800 to 2,500, depending on what you've got, who have, who installs them. Again, that was just a ballpark price of what right. I was able to um, yeah. You know, we, we did pony up $800 a piece to each resident or each user years ago to pull the sump pumps out. Right. Um, maybe this is something maybe we want to think about in the future too. You know, I mean, granted it's, it's, you know, to give the money, you got to raise the taxes. So basically they're, they're, they're getting their own money back. Per se, yeah. um, for but a long period, for them. you know, exactly. So it's again just a thought, you know, just something. Um, I'm just trying to think outside the box. What we can do to try and protect ourselves a little bit better and try and yeah. save some money. You know what, Kevin? I, whenever you have a chance to actually nail down the price a little bit, mm -hmm. I think we should consider it as part of the for the next budget year anyway, because that, I, I mean, the whole users are paying for the you know right. repair work and or you know yeah. people come in to fix it but in the long run if we bought those eight hundred dollar units or a thousand dollar units you know not obviously it's double if it gets to twenty five hundred but yeah. if if it's truly in the thousand dollar range you know it's only a few households really eight hundred yeah so i mean if we bought those you i mean you know if we had people buy, you know, budgeted it in your enterprise fund and then had people, you know, get them installed, then th that repair work would not be part of the, you know, your operational costs. There might, oh, there oh, might it, would, it would help out dramatically. Yeah. The payback, I bet the payback is in probably two or three years on that. We should talk about it when we do our regs. Yeah. Yep. Um, like I said, it was just just something off the top yeah. of my head, thinking about different ways of trying to, you know, we we talked about this quite a few years ago, but we never really followed up with it. So I, I think right. we really like to to go further with it and do okay. a follow up, you know, because we were also, originally talking about doing that for the people on Lathrop, right? <clears throat> yeah, but I think it should be town wide, it should be user wide. Otherwise, you're picking on somebody, right? 
All right. We'll see cool. what the payback is. Okay. Okay. Uh, you I will get that information for you. All right. Thanks, All right. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, All right. just for the coming budget year. Yep. No, understood. I mean, it's more or less to have a discussion on payback. You know, Copy. How, how many years does it take to pay back? If it's just two or three years, it makes sense. Okay. Understood. Um, Casey, do you have anything to add? I on your... do. I have a couple of things. So the USDA loans require some compliance review and reporting. And I've been working with Sarah on that and a couple of other people like Kevin um, to gather information so we can provide that. The majority of it is ready to go. There were two things that were outstanding. So I'll be finishing that up. Um, actually, I think Tim gave information on the library edition project. Um, I did want to let everybody know that I think we are paid to date for the invoices. Um, so hopefully that makes the, uh, architect happy. Um, so we're still working on some of the, pro the, uh, tasks associated with the St. James Church property. And there's more information that I need. We're also waiting for some information back from the current owner. So when there's more information, I'll let you know. Um, the HVAC system at the, at the police department, the bids published and a walkthrough is scheduled for tomorrow. The deadline for submissions of the bid is December 28th. So we'll have a lot more information once those bids come back. Um, we can expect more information on the proposed South County Senior Center location. I did have a quick conversation with Jeff today. Um, and mm -hmm. once I get some more information, I'll share it with you. He sent but, an email tonight, which is... Hmm. Yeah, and so that's the thing. You may have seen it, not everybody's seen it, and I haven't mm -hmm. seen it right. to read it. Um, but there's some concerns. There's things we're gonna have to talk about. Yeah. So but I did he and I did talk about it because we were both a little he had questions for me and I had questions for him. So that's still in play. Um debris in the 1888 building, thanks to Kevin, is still cleaned up or has been cleaned up and I'll be coordinating with the cleaning service to clean in preparation for the mosquito district coming in. Um, let's see. We did receive, so I wanted to let everybody know this happened two weeks ago. We got a, it was actually a notification, a second notice of a complaint we had gotten in 2017 about ADA parking in front of the municipal offices. And we're basically not compliant with the requirements. Huh. So Kevin talked to me as well as Bob in the building commissioner. And essentially they said to us, hey, you didn't get back to us in 2017. We want to know what's going on, but oh wait, we can find you if you don't deal with it. So we talked, Kevin's got a plan. They actually you were really more? helpful. More parking? No, we have to move. We have to actually assign a parking space in the parking area, not next to the sidewalk. Not the one next to the front. Yep, we have to. It has to be different. So what? Kevin's going to take Why? care of that. It's eighty. It, it, it was okay before, but now it's not. It's not. It um, I'm sure, you have to walk a further distance to get. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So yeah. basically, what we're going to be doing is we're the that's the exactly parking that's space that's closest to the fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. We're taking that space. And then to the right hand side, so we were not taking any more spaces. The the open area, that's where we're going to put in all the hash marks for for the unloading. So unloading. realistically, okay. I mean, the the one that's in the front of the building. If you want now, we can go ahead and paint it over, and, and then you really don't lose a spot. You know, somebody whoever pulls in front gets front row parking. So, um, you know, the plan is is basically by 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 the end of next week to pull the sign, install the new sign. I can't do it until Monday because it dig safe. Um, and as yeah. soon as I know that we've got some good dry weather, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and slam down some paint, take the pictures right. for it, and then go ahead and ship it back. Yeah. And then we basically notify them it's been completed and they will clear out that particular complaint. Now we're going to do some, I saw your email today about doing another handicap one on the other side by the, by the new EV chargers. 
So that's going to be required. It's not going to be specifically marked as a handicap space, but it's going to need the, the hash marks next to it okay. to accommodate if somebody were to take a wheelchair accessible vehicle there. Okay, thank you. Sure. So thanks to Kevin, we have that in thanks, play Kevin. and set. I responded to um, the person that sent me the complaint and told them that we would get it done within a certain time period. And I think, you know, Kevin's made every effort to help us get that done. So once that's complete, we should get relief from that potential uh, fine from the complaint. So that's one of those small things that seems like a small thing until it isn't a small thing. Um, I did want to let everybody know that the treasure collector and the assistant treasure collector got the real estate bills printed and they're out the door. Thank and you. Thank you very much Thanks to that them part. for working really fast and to the assessors for signing what they had to sign so that we could get those out the door. Um, you and everybody that helped coordinate that. You signed the tax rate thing, right? Okay. Yeah. So well, all of that is all set. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a collective sigh of relief. Yep. Um, a lot of work. Not, not for everybody at their mailbox. No, but <laughs> there'll be a different, at different least noise. We feel better about getting them out. Um, and I know nobody likes to get their tax bill. I know that. Um, but we do need to be able to pay for the services. So um, I did want to let you know, there is a complaint out there. It's a dog complaint. And Chris is going to be working to help us set up a hearing. We're going to have to hold a hearing in January on this issue. Um, it's a incessant barking complaint. Mm -hmm. There's some background work, like getting a report on that. Um, okay. prior to doing that, but he's got a schedule for us to hold a hearing and he will confirm it with you after we've had a chance to go over it, but you will have to have a have a hearing in the beginning of January about that. So speaking of dogs, there's something that is being dropped, but we don't have Dismissal to talk about the it. Appeal. Yeah. yeah. That's, We're all clear on that. Yeah. We really, we don't really have to do anything except to have counsel sign off on it, that, okay. he's, a, that he's received it. Um, because it's actually is the dismissal is, goes to the courthouse. Yeah. Is this the same dog? Yes. And yes. but the dismissal means that what, dismissal what we is, do, what we decided is now accepted yeah. as reality. And okay, thank you. So yeah, I had sent an email out about that. Yeah, I did. I, I, it, it, yeah, and it's it's it seems like oh wait, this is a big deal. But then you know, Chris and I met mm -hmm. met with Matt Provencher, and you know. This is formulaic on the court. Okay, I mean, I guess we can solve it. Uh, but I, if we've if we've already designated this dog as a dangerous dog, this would be a nuisance complaint, but which is a different complaint. So it will be designated both as a dangerous dog and a nuisance dog. We're not. Well, we don't making know. this. We don't know. We, don't we have know. to get more information, and you have to okay. hear it. And that would be up to the board to decide. The dangerous. I just don't want the dangerous dog one downgraded. No, it's a, it's a this is totally separate. Totally separate. Totally separate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And that was one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to Matt about it because I was afraid of that myself. Uh, yeah, no, that's what I was wondering. No, this about. is a completely separate complaint. And it's for nuisance complaints rather than other right. bites. Right. Okay. So, yeah, no, I've seen the complaint. Yeah. So oh, you right. can expect to see more information about that in the next week or so. Okay. Um, let's see. So budgets. I did, like I said before, finance committee is going to be meeting on Monday. So we'll need to work out what that looks like for you all. And if it means we post and not everybody shows up, that's fine. But I do think you guys should have the opportunity to sit with the finance committee and really listen to the considerations that both, both boards I, I, have. I, I want you to post it so that we can have joint meetings. Okay. If yeah, that's choosing. what we would plan to do. I mean, I'm not going to be able to make every single Monday because I have a couple of commitments, but um, I would hope to make most of the Mondays, and I would also hope that, you know, when you have a department head scheduled, that we have joint meetings so it, poor department head doesn't have to come out twice. Well, that's why I was hoping if we could do joint yeah. meetings, then, you know, yeah. because if it's reported, you guys can sit back and watch it again if you need to. Um, but one thing about budget preparation is the personnel board's having a meeting on Monday, so I'll be working with them to discuss a cost of living adjustment. And the information, I just started reviewing the information for that. I haven't put together the recommendation. Um, but essentially, we use the consumer price index from the Northeast region. And I'll be using that now that the November numbers are out. Um, 
Well, I mean, this is one of the things that I feel is really important to understand is we're not going to do a COLA. No decisions on COLA will be made until after January 16th. Okay, so that's what you have to understand, Carolyn. You've got a personnel board that has a completely separate responsibility. And so if you want me to take that to them, I can ask them, but they are an independent group and they are under the bylaw required to review that. And so that's fine, but I'm just saying that we are not- And I, if you want to come and talk to them about it, that's fine. There's nothing to talk about. There's just no money for COLAs, that's all. So are you telling me not to ask them to discuss it? I, I don't, I, th I would anticipate they should delay talking about it probably. Well, you can't even build a budget without an idea of what a COLA would be. Well, yeah, I mean. Um, Functionally, uh, what, department heads can't even turn their payroll budgets yeah. in without some sort of idea because well, they have you, to have a number. No, but we, we're doing the steps because that's in our, in our bylaw already. Mm -hmm. But I, I would pass in the budget with no COLAs. Okay, so that's a different conversation. That's FY25. And that's a different conversation because again, I have to work with personnel board in a certain period so that I can meet the expectations of the budget director. So sh we are actually sharing enough information. If you want me to go back and change that expectation, I have to know so I can have that conversation what, with the personnel. What do you board. want to do, Trevor? Do you want well, to I mean, we can take the recommendation. It will decide at the end whether we can do it or not. But I yeah, so it like makes sense to have them. I was just curious. I I didn't. Did you say that you had a figure for the Northeast? I think it's 2.8 or it's 3. It's 2.5 right now. It dropped about yeah. two tenths of a percent from October to November. Yeah. Um, um, but functionally, in order for that, for people, department heads, to look at their budgets. They sure. have to have an idea of whether a COLA is going to be considered or not. If you're saying that you do not want the personnel board to consider a COLA, I need to notify them. I think they can consider it. I, we just don't know if we can pass it. You know what I mean? We'll have to look once oh, we get close. Yeah. We always do that. They they look at it. They recommend a COLA. Right. And then as we get closer in the final budget things, we, we're going to be able to know whether there's money or not. We just don't know yet. That's always the case, though. But I think it's good to have the recommendation whether they think it needs Usually it or not. Usually the recommendation means you're going to do that. So that's why it's important it for me to actually no. be clear from no. all three of you. Clear from all three. I mean, we never know until the end. But I okay. think it's important for them to plan. I mean, if the step is roughly what the what the, uh, the, the Northeast... The steps are usually 2%. Yeah. 2.5. Two yeah. Two so, and a half. Right. So if they are basically mirroring, you know what what we're seeing is but the cola is on top of the step well i i realize that i'm saying has it become the expectation that everybody is always going to get a cost of living increase even though their wages are going up no i mean it, they should in some cases people don't get a cost of living increase if they've hit the end of their right they're at yeah the top. i think it they're needs to be much more nuanced than a blanket you know we're going to do this but obviously we need to know what you know what the budgets look like and stuff so i think I, I don't have a problem with them considering it. Um, I think it's important that they evaluate it. As Tim said, consider it. Um, and then for um, for Brenda and, and people developing their budgets, what would the impact be if we did it? We just don't know if it can be the full amount or I, any amount. or We just don't know until the end. We never really know until the end, unless you know you're having a great year and you can, oh, yeah, everybody gets a cola, no problem. But Every year, in my experience, we don't know until we get right up to the end. Maybe we know a little bit before that, but we plan for it. And then, you know, I think the hard part is when Brenda is putting together all the budgets for everybody, it's difficult for her to have two different sets of books. So one has the COLA, one does not. But I think we do need to know what that impact is. What is the cost for a COLA at two and a half or whatever, you know, whatever the Northeast is? And I think we strive for that because we want to keep up with inflation as we're looking to hire people. We're always struggling to to bring people in on schedule. So I think it's important to look at it. And if we can swing it, yes. But, you know, if we get nailed this year, we don't get the votes, we don't have any money and we're trying to scrape everything together, we can't. But yeah. I think it's important to plan for it, have them do the evaluation. It's their recommendation, yay or nay. 
And then we, you know, as we get further in the budgets, we we always vote on that a little later on. Casey, when are they, when are they, have they scheduled a meeting to, to do this December? Yeah, yeah, they're meeting next Monday. Yeah. So they should, they should evaluate. Uh, I just. Recommendation. But it can't be a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. Well, I Ever think everybody, so for purposes of messaging out to the department heads, even if this happens mm -hmm. and there's no guarantee, it really, to be honest with you, there's enough contracts in place. There's very few people that this, there's more people that would be not affected than there would be affected mm -hmm. because it's really, there's so like we'll, 40 people, So it, not even 40 people affected so we'll by know, this now. We'll need to know what that, what that number is. Um, and then we don't guarantee it. We never have. Because you, can, you can't ever guarantee a cost of living to people because you just don't know. Never has. So Never I done. just want I just want to be clear when I yep. talk to the personnel board. Um, yeah, that they can. That they although can we're asking for this recommendation, it may not yeah. be in play. Correct. It and never exactly is anywhere. Right. That's exactly right. And I and I hesitate to send a signal that it that we're even open to it because we have some specifications for. Mm -hmm. We got money in the bank. I, 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 I mean, it, it seems to me it would be self self evident. Although we haven't sent the memo out, but if we're we're asking people to consider twenty percent cuts, that colas are in the wrong direction. But you know, but I don't again, I don't necessarily disagree with that part. I just want to be. Clear. Oh yeah, you're right. It's twenty twenty five budget. It's not this budget we're dealing right. with. But we may have to move things around. So. I just want to say that normally we talk about level services mm -hmm. for the most of my yeah. select board life has been what is if you were to deliver the same services, what is it? I, I think we have to this there is reality this year. This actually might be service cuts mm -hmm. because of just, you know, everything is way up. You were talking about Franklin Tech mm -hmm. building a new school. Uh the assessments we know scams assessments are going to be up because we use the capital that we normally offset the assessments with it's been ambulance. used to buy um it, towards the ambulances and equipment um you know light packs and stuff we this yeah. is this is more severe this year than any, ever before so, so i but they should that, evaluate. Wait, let me ask that question because yeah. we've already sent the budget memo do you want that revised do you want us to send out a memo that says Instead, belay what we just sent you, you should be looking at service cuts. We need to know and we need to know now. No, because we don't know until the 16th. Can we, can we I, mean, you be, I just no want people, gonna, and, and it's the fine. reason I'm concerned about it is I want people to understand they're going to be confused. That's fine. We're all confused. What is confusing to me is, okay, what is it hard to understand? We are in a budget cash flow problem and potentially a budget hole and so plan accordingly so what we don't say in the memo about budgets is talking about the memo that we plan for no not this the budget memo that goes out to department heads with the date of january 8th to return their budgets yes right we don't tell them look at service cuts right we don't, didn't tell them that. Right, because we so don't we have, have it yet. It, I want to know because that's a conversation that I have to have very We're not quickly with know. Brenda. No one's going to know yet. We're just not going to know. So that's what I mean, Carolyn, is if if we're changing that, I need to know. Carol, um, Brenda's going on vacation next week. Right. So, so you probably should communicate to the personnel board that the select board is going to be really looking closely at COLAs and they need to be aware that there may not be the money for a cola and these people and, and well, I will absolutely yeah, tell yeah, them that. Yeah. It's just, you but know, they got to do what they're required to do by their, their charter. So um, I don't know if them, I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth. If I am, you know, sorry. Well, <laughs> but I mean, we do know that there are serious issues. Okay. Yeah. So, I, so I think, do you want to say instead of level services, do you want to say potentially? No, I don't want to say anything until we okay. know for sure. Right. I think, look, look, it's we've got time. We've got a vote coming up. It, I think, you know, our free cash was in pretty good spot. If we can get the borrowing authority done, we'll be in, in a little bit better spot. Let's have 
personnel plan for whatever COLA they would like to see everybody have based on cost of living. We'll take that vote much later into December and February, whether we can afford that or not. You know, we need to know from Brenda what is that number because again, more people are on contracts, lesser, you know, lesser hourly. So let's see what that impact is on everybody and the budgets. And then we've got to have that number to know whether we've got to cut it or not. So I think one reason why, you know, you guys moved into the whole step stuff is because you were trying to make sure that Current. there was an acknowledgement that prices go up and cost of living goes up, mm -hmm. um, you know, so. And you wanted to, you know, you're bringing, pe a lot of times you're bringing people in lower and then they know that, okay, I've got 10 or seven years to grow on this schedule and that's guaranteed each right. year they're going to get a step. And then if, if we have a, a, a decent year and we've had high inflation, we can, we can cover that, you know, right. we have enough free cash or whatever to be able to cover yep. that and keep, and it also keeps pay current. So when you go out to look for somebody on the market or you do a, a you know, right. a recalculation you of your, that. your pay right. scale, it's not way out of whack and you don't get hit right. again. So you do want to try and keep up with it each year, but you just don't know if you can. It's really just until you get, positive vote, you know, what are the schools doing? What's the state going to do? Like all those things play in and we just don't know until much later. That's always the issue. You never know until late January or February that what's going on. And then you're you know, hoping by April, you're like, yeah, let's get it together and get it done. Yeah. But the, but the state never has their budget out. We'll, yeah. We still will we'll vote, vote annual town meeting. We're still not knowing what the state's going to do. Oh, we won't know until at least July. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's sorry, to, yeah. No, just, no, I just that's why I'm know. asking because well, it, how I frame that with other people is going to be important. Well, Casey, I just think Plan it's important it. to be that it, the acknowledgement is different this year. It's not black and white. Yeah, no, but we've gone through a huge amount of inflation this year, mm -hmm. even over last. But it's back. You can look at it if you want. <laughs> it's back. Look at the it's curve on this north. thing. Right. It's come down. <laughs> it's much lower. And it's That's what I'm saying. No, I'm saying it's lower. It's lower. Yeah. I thought you were saying. it's lower all year. And True, so, right. It's been cycling know, down. And that's a good thing. that Year over like, year yeah. is the only thing you can say. Exactly. Yeah. So to the extent that we're trying to be thoughtful and look at 12 months, mm -hmm. you know, what I say to the personnel personnel board is going to be okay you can make this can make this recommendation but we can't guarantee it will happen at the end of the year. correct at the end of the just budget. like every every year um yeah. and frankly people are going to hear me say that and they're going to ask questions and i'll be frank with the staff that we don't know what's going to happen yeah and everybody right. does everybody if they have a crystal ball they're in the wrong job <laughs> yeah but we certainly aren't going to know anything until after the 16th of january yep and if you want to give them a silver lining you can tell them that the the Fed is expected to cut rates three times next year. Yeah. So exactly. Uh, whether that it's comes to fruition, right we don't know. But uh, it's sure an indication that the Fed's recognizing that they've really hit the economy hard by raising rates so high. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. That was those were one of the, some of the things that I was looking to talk to you about. Um, I think. Hold on. There's one other thing. <laughs> Oh, so shared streets and spaces. So it's that crosswalk identifier grant. Um, after I talked to, Denise and I talked to Lori Scarborough and Beth Janini at the COP. And in order for us to make a change to use the intersection of Conway Street and North Main Street for one of those crossing areas with indicator lights, um, we need to have some engineering done work in that area. Um, if the grant does not allow a small percentage to be used toward engineering, would the select board allow me to use part of the complete streets, um, funds for that? Yeah, because that's to. really what it was for, for sure. was to deal with that yeah. area of the yeah, streets. Of course. Um, it certainly would be a traffic calming and a, um, pedestrian clear crossing area with clarification. Yeah, it would help. Where all the kids are. The street That's too. where all the kids go. Yeah, absolutely. Is is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I don't know what anyone else thinks. I'm just going to ask. I know that there's a pathway that comes out of the common in the middle of, yeah. you know, For is sure. there any way that we can just unilaterally say this crosswalk is dangerous and we're yeah, not going to have it a crosswalk anymore? That was the whole anymore. plan of the common thing. Get I mean, rid of it and yeah. move it over by uh, by the end of 
the uh, Leary lot coming out of the Leary lot. How do we connect it to the common? I, I really want to tie all that together. Well, yeah, I, I just mean for it. I agree. Well, just shut it down. Now. There should be money um, because we didn't use. Remember, we had a, appropriate yeah. money for the HVAC system and then it went back in. So I, I think there's going to be enough. We can do the crosswalk to the common. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that we've got Get rid of the one three control. crosswalks yep. in the space of 150 feet. Right. And one of them's dangerous as heck yeah. because it's in crosswalk between cars. between cars. Yeah. Get, yeah. get rid of or it. Paint yeah, it. It's really bad. Paint it black. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. I know. I get it. You got to, you got, maybe you can't paint it anymore. You got to rub this stuff off. Yeah. Whatever. But say it blasted off. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Get rid yeah. of it for sure. Okay. Those are my things. Okay. Chris, Chris, oh, my turn. Okay. That's a nice. So list from you too. All right. I'm going to go straight down the list. So town hall EV charging. You may have noticed if you went over to this parking lot on that side of the building, there are a couple of chargers that have been put in by ChargePoint uh, and our contractors over at Universal Electric. Those are up. They are not yet operational. First, we need to have a pole installed by Eversource, and that's slated to happen this coming Monday. Uh, after that happens, Universal Electric can finish up with their wiring that needs to be done. It's going to get an inspection, and then it'll be good to go. Um, Thank you. Thank yes, you. looking forward to that. I've sent... A couple of emails now to staff that some people's parking situations might be affected. That. Um, so that is going to be a slight adjustment for some. I know a couple of people aren't particularly happy at the moment about it, but we do have ample parking in other areas of the building. They get an EV charger, they'll have a designated parking spot. Absolutely. And <laughs> I, I did make that EV point in one of the emails. Um, or even a plug in hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to invest in something like that for myself in the near future. Yeah. Um, so uh, mobile food permitting. I've heard from a couple of different uh, food truck vendors, namely Thai Chili, uh, Crazy Arepas, and um, I can't remember the third one at the moment. Um, but it's a request from them to come before the board to discuss the mobile food permitting process. I know that those discussions have happened in the past. and it's Actually, it's wonderful so that we can explain in public to them because we've explained them in private. That we have to cover our costs. Sure. And we actually are going to make uh, uh, probably uh, my recommendation is a cost increase to $50, which we need to explain to them in a person so they can stop calling you and complaining. So I would be glad to have a meeting dedicated to our costs that are related to their activity and how we have to cover it. And we're so glad that they came before us to make us really look at it and see that we're not covering our costs and that we have to increase our costs. So I will let them know uh, the first January meeting, if that's okay with everybody. Um, Fine. Because yep. I had initially- Very exciting, Chris. Okay. I, I had initially to raised- eliminate those three complaints. Okay. I had initially raised the 27th as a possibility, but that's a bad week for people with holidays. So- yeah. Um, just I'll, make sure that Val can come. Okay. So we can talk about how she works Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sure. And and we are so incredibly lucky to have her. Absolutely. Okay. And okay. I, I believe she has some thoughts on it too. So okay. that will be good Love to hear. To hear them all. Yep. Uh office reorganization. So my new desk has finally arrived. Yay. I'm quickly becoming more and more settled into the new space. And I just wanted to thank everybody who helped with Is the it move. Coca Boba? Is it what? Is it a Coca Boba desk? <laughs> I am not quite sure what that means. <laughs> it's, a, it's a line from Better Call Saul. Oh, gotcha. I'm out of the loop a little bit. Um, so uh, at the very beginning of this meeting that we're now in hour four and almost a half of, uh, you met Christopher Dunn yep. in person uh, at a meeting. Uh, that was fantastic. He's been doing great work already. He's just in his second week now. He's settled in quite well. I'm enjoying sharing an office space with him generally. Um, and in other personnel news, uh, we have recently hired a new program coordinator over at the South County Senior Center. So thank you again for your authorization of that hire last week. I'm glad we were able to clear up that it is grant funded entirely. And uh, yep, Tom Patria is going to be a huge help to Jen and her team. That's great. Um, Inspector General's One Free Designee Program. I started another class this week because I figured grad school wasn't enough. Why not? Um, and that is the second of the three courses that are going to allow me to be MCPPO certified by the spring. So thank you again to Casey and all yeah. three of you for the support. Sure. And pursuing that program. Great work. 
Uh, the 2024 Municipal Cybersecurity Awareness Grant Program. I've submitted our application, and as far as I'm aware, it's a done deal because uh, the grant program is basically guaranteed to everybody who applies until they run out of licenses, right. which they haven't done yet. Right. Um, so that means our staff are going to be getting free cybersecurity training at no cost to the town or to anybody. That's um, awesome. And Thanks, it's going to be very good to see. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that a lot. Um, Mosquito Control District lease of the 1888 building. I checked in with DCAM. Uh, we're, we're still waiting for their final review, from my understanding. Um, Lord. The state moves at glacial paces. We, yep. we, we all understand that. Yep. Um, so that's going to be settled in time for the lease to begin in January. And then finally, we touched on this one already, too, but the FY25 MVP action grant up and helping Chris Curtis, as well as Christopher Dunn, we've all been working with the MVP core team on creating a list of priorities that are going to be used to guide the expression of interest that's being submitted before this Friday, which is the deadline. And that's going to be really helpful in terms of getting us some, some feedback, potentially, and organizing our ideas on what we want to do for the MVP program in the next fiscal year. So you took notes from our discussion then of our priorities. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to work with both of the other Chris's uh, in the next couple of days. And we'll make sure that we get a nice submittal by Friday. Okay. Right. Thank you. We are coming to the end of the fiscal year, right? So uh, no, calendar, year. Calendar, year. calendar year. And um, that's how we write our reports. So select, and report, select board's report is going to be need to be done for the next for the previous 12 months. I'm sure Pat will reach out to everybody so we can get it done early for her and she can get the printing done for the meeting. So is that for the annual town meeting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's for the annual report. We yeah. like try to have it ready for the annual town meeting. Yeah. Fun, oh. fun stuff. I, I'm not going to do it until what? after you the are holiday. The, you are the chair. You got to do it. You guys dig in now. You can get a jump start on. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, three months. Did you? Mentioning now that Please. I'm not available for rewrite. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, right. Because it's super... yeah, Tim. Can you? Uh, can you? I just. I... <laughs> actually, this is really. It is actually a serious thing. We've been so um, bogged down with um, repair work. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I, 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 I'm teasing. I'm going to definitely know, help. I know. I know. Thank, Thank you. you. I know you will. <laughs> I will bug you. Um, but um, you know this. This. This could be really. I mean, people just, I don't even know what to write about this. This has just been an unbelievable year. Crazier than COVID. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyway, I'll Hope take a adjourn. adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank, thank you, you all very much. Yeah. Have a great night.